listening to the Getting Salty Experience podcast. And away we go. <laughs> Welcome back, Leatherhead Nation, to the Getting Salty Experience podcast. It's the one that brings the firehouse, gets your table right to you. Self-proclaimed best podcast in, in, the whole the history, his, in the history of time, I'm going to say, all of time. <laughs> Mm-hmm. All the time, <laughs> best self-proclaimed podcast ever. Four and a half billion he, years. Even in the metaverse, we are oh. yeah, in the generally multi, number in one. The Marvel multiverse in the multiverse, we're the best ones. Mm. But, uh, yeah, in the in mm. the multiverse, <laughs> Louis actually has heat in his house. Oh. In the <laughs> he can finally afford it in the multiverse. Yes. Oh, the multiverse. That's, like, that's like a matrix. Uh, it's like a different uh, multiple universes. So I, I yeah, don't it's like that different. Multiverse. It's like different timelines, Lou. But basically, you're mm. a wealthy thousandaire, and you can turn the heat on in your home. In, yes, in the, uh, <laughs> in, in the other multiverse. Yeah. Uh, yep. I just got, got my new, my new squad again. You see, I just Ooh. put the dipper in. I brought it to the place the other day. Oh. I might do that. I have yes. one. Maybe I'll do that. Yeah, I just it's brandy new. Can't you tell? Look how brandy new it is. Uh, where'd you get that from? How'd you get a brand new one? A job. What a job gave you one. The jab. <laughs> oh, speaking of the job, before we forget North on a tangent, I want to wish a very, very high and heartfelt congratulations to Chief Steve. 43 years on the job today. It's his anniversary. That old project. Yep. Yo, poop. 43 Someone years. Too. 43 Isn't years. He's still Isn't that enough? J-O B- That's what I keep saying to him. Christ. Bro. On the J.O. Bizzle, that old coot. It's enough. Yeah. I just want to let you know I'm missing the Ranger game too for this. Oh, oh. You, I want to let you know I'm missing Cliffy's last night in the squad. Tonight. I know oh, Clifford. We Cliffy were supposed, to, supposed to be yesterday. Oh. <laughs> That's for you, of oh, course. Thanks. All right. I yeah, want to make you feel at home. You know what I mean, Luke? Thank you. I appreciate it. Cliffy, right. big red dog, my chauffeur for ten years. Oh wow, he's retiring. We go, Cliffy, uh, retiring. tomorrow. Last tomorrow. night, tonight in the firehouse. It was supposed to be last night. Got moved to tonight. Otherwise, we would have been there. We would have so, been there. Nice, nice. Yeah. All, All right. right. Yeah. You want to pay, and, the, uh, pay these bills? Yeah, and then we can. Say, before I forget, yeah, we, will, we have a show on Monday, right? We have mm-hmm. Chief Norman. And then we're off and away we go to Pittsburgh. Me and Ruffy heading on down to Monroeville. Come see us. John Albanese, I don't hear no bullshit about how you're not coming out. <laughs> or nothing. You live right there. So yeah, Albanese I'll, is coming? I'll say it like you. Yins, oh, better get out there. Whatever oh, yins my, means. Yeah, whatever yins means, yeah. And just FYI, <laughs> uh, Monday night show, I, I am working Monday, but I should be home in time for it. I might be really tight, so I'll let you guys know. We might be a half hour late or something, but just stay on. Uh, stay Pay attention to the Facebook page. That's where I'll make any announcements last minute. All um, right. Yeah, I get off of work at four from the city, so I should be home right in time to uh, to make it. There you go. All right, pay the bills. Okay, we're gonna pay these bills. Then we're gonna do the, the bring our guy in, do the uh, flag, of course. Do it all, and, uh, and then the word of the day. Here we go. First and foremost, guys, get in saltyapparel.com. You know the deal by now, but if you don't. Head on over to getinsultyapparel.com. Get yourself a tumbler. Get yourself firefighter hats, uh, T-shirts, hoodies. It's still hoodie season. Yeah. Get yourself a bunch of ice and put it right in the goddamn microphone. Like the ice is that you could, like the plastic ones that you could freeze. With yeah, all yeah, yeah, yeah. Good idea. Get yourself a box Ooh. key, bottle opener, a uh, partner saw, cigar cutter, all the wonderful stuff that we have at GettingSaltyApparel.com, guys. It helps us support ourselves so and the show, of course. And speaking of them. supporting ourselves, the Super Chat. Guys, I'm not saying... You gotta, but if you want to support the show, you guys are our number one sponsors and syndicators. Hit us up with a few shekels. Oh crap! Yeah, in the super chat and you had uh, Chief you... Dunn on. You had Chief Dunn. Chief Dunn's on coming the back. Show. Are you He's kidding me? Back. Are you He's kidding me? I mean, honestly, who do we have to have on the show? Like Jesus I mean, Christ, we got to get Christ yeah. on the show. Oh, to... You know who you should get on the show, though. You know who you should well, get. Oh, who? I got a guy. Oh, oh yeah, right, right. Mm. Yin's guys need to get Yin's guy from Yin's town. Um, but yes, uh, so super chat is how we support ourselves for real, and it's a uh, super help. If you guys absolutely positively have a question you have to have answered, uh, shoot it in the super chat. But uh, one caveat: keep it on topic. If you're hearing uh, the 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 guest talking about whatever it is. Uh, for sure, you know, if it's if he's Shoot having a 9 11 story and a line of duty death story, don't ask me if he knew uh Tommy Tuno Tuno's from uh ladder four five two three four five seven eight nine. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. You. That's it. Yeah. Super chat. Go doom. Oh man. Uh, are we gonna wow. get patriotic now, or what are we gonna do? We I think we bring our. Up? I think we bring our guy in, and everyone gets patriotic. I, I feel like we should. You know, You've been on the show before. You know how it works, right? I mean, do you have uh, it? yeah, it works. I'm sorry. Were you talking to me? What did you say? <laughs> Oh, okay. Some of my uh, bitch. Uh, I gotta say, this, guy, this might be the freshest guy we had offered time at Brian. He retired when we just said we just caught two, hour, two hours ago. He yesterday. just bought his badge. Just he just retired. bought his badge. Just retired. He's seen a couple of fires. Got a, a fact he was in the same probe class as Chief Steve. How do you like them apples? We're gonna if he only would have thought if he only would have thought that 43 years after he got on the job, he would be on this show. It would have all he, been worked uh, out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is this is the pinnacle of his career. Right here. Uh, and he hasn't even gotten the salty yet. We've reached the, <laughs> we've reached the summit. Let's bring oh, in Mike Scotto. Oh yes, there he is. All right, okay. Rush, you did it, Mike. You, you really did it. Do you, ha- really... do you have a do you have a full twenty four hours retired yet? Uh, in about fifteen minutes, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we got him fresh off the griddle. We got him, bro. Nice. So we yep. want to want to do our pledge real quick, and we'll uh, move on with the show. Yeah, seeing that this Absolutely. is the best country in the history of this world. Yep. Let's uh, let's pay our homage, bro. Here he comes. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation. Under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Still get nice. it. I still yeah, get the little, the little... One, Petey. I have to oh, say, I, did, man. I don't I give the, you much credit, but I get I really, the chills. I get the chills. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't. I don't need credit, man. That one's all about the USA. Okay. That was just okay. makes me happy. Hey, Mike, time. somebody in the chat wants to know if you're related to Rosanna. Scott, no. Way well, back in the old country, we had the thing. We made some spaghetti, a little pasta. A, little <laughs> a little spaghetti. Maybe we had, a couple of, uh, we had a couple of grapes between our toes together. I don't yeah, know. Maybe. Boom, we, we got a lot of Italians <laughs> coming on. Thank God. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Let's, all right, get, right, a little... all right, right, <laughs> let's get a little word of the day, Rocco. Oh, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a good one. The word of the day is... Lieutenant Blabs. Lieutenant Blabs. That's who's that? that? Who who's that? I don't know. Who came up with that one, Ruffy? I don't know. I'm just saying it might have been somebody who talks a lot. I don't know. Maybe somebody. Oh my god! Actually, my Google gave me that name. He did. The guy Emily. Emily. Yeah, I don't know what that word means, but I heard it once. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't sound like this, is he? Oh, man. Same Come guy. On, man. Same, same guy. Same oh, man. Guy. That's the oh, same guy. It is the same guy. Let's get a little background on Lieutenant Scott. Where are you? A little early life on Lieutenant Scott. Where are you from? Well, I know your father was on the job, so that probably got you in. So get, you give us a story. Give us the perspective of a young Mike Scott. Well, I grew up in Brooklyn, if you couldn't tell. Thank you. Where? And, in, uh, uh, and he, yeah, oh, that's my dad that on the right. The shorter guy with his mouth open. He's talking. I don't know why, but he's talking too. <laughs> He said he's probably going, would you take the freaking picture already? You know what it looks like to me? It looks like a buff on goal. I still not. He was in 220 in Brooklyn, in Park Slope. Don't drink all the wine. (laughs) Back then, the Flory Battalion was in with those guys. So that's him. He had 31 years on. He retired back in 84. Wow. Nice. Wow, 31 years retired. Yeah, that's a bunch of the guys. He's the second guy from the right. And I was telling the guys we were talking about earlier, the officers had black hats back in the 60s. They didn't have the white caps. Look at that. Huh. And then the, the guy, take a look at the guy, the second guy from the right next to the captain. His name is Tony Ciro. His son is on the job in 39 truck, spitting right. image of him. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I, I thought it was the same guy first time I saw him. They cloned him. He's identical looking. He's a great that, Where is your dad? He's second from the left? Second from the left, yeah. Oh, he looks like a bruiser. Look at is he threw, still around? He threw a couple of beats. No, he passed away, he passed away about 17 years ago. Ah. Sorry to hear it. What, what company is this here? That, that, this that is 220. Oh, all right. Nice. All right. I worked that, at 
the guy next to him looks like one of those guys too. One of them there. Thompson. 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 He was uh, he was big in the Airmos back in the day. His name was Thompson, Mister Thompson. I call everybody Mister. <clears throat> remember their names because it was always Mister this and Mister that. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. I I still make my kids to this day call him uh, whoever it is, Mister Pete, yeah. Mister Lou, whatever it is. Yep. Like the uncle this or aunt that do the right thing. Yeah. Oh, hundred yeah. percent. I remember Look back then. Yep. True story. I go I go there to pick up the uh, paychecks because they would get the paychecks. They take seven or eight of them, go to the bank and cash them for the guys that were off duty and come back and then give them all the money. They go to me, kid, go up the block to Gars. It was a local deli and get us something to drink. So I walk up there. I put the thing in the, the big box down and the guys go, who are you? I said, oh, I'm John Scotto's son. So, all right. Pay him the money. I walk right back down the block on my shoulder, right through the apparatus door. Broad daylight. Not a word. <laughs> <laughs> Whole case of Pepsi on it, Tom. So how close times. was that? How close was he to the, did you live to the firehouse? Like right down the road? Or? Well, he was in Park Slope, we were in Bay Ridge. So I mean oh, all right. quite, we far. didn't have a car. I took the train or the bus, you know, 20 minutes, half hour, whatever it was, or he'd yeah, walk yeah. it sometimes maybe a few miles. Dude, what would you cool. what would you give to go like in the time machine and go back and sit in the kitchen in nineteen sixty something, bro? I just uh, yeah. oh man, it would be great. Well, back right? then, back then they had two separate kitchens. There was an argument in like the fifties about something, and they didn't eat together. They had separate oh, kitchens. So we know that. Yeah, Italian well, four eight eight with two twenty and one twenty two eight by themselves. Well, they have two different. When you look at their firehouse, right. it's actually two different buildings. Right, they they were built it at different times. Like the engine was there buildings. first, and then really? they had the truck in the early nineteen hundreds, I believe. They've now made the house watch one. I actually worked there in the eighties when they started doing citywide detailing. They're going we detail tonight, Mike. I said, "Where am I going?" So the aide goes, "Oh, here, here, here." Oh, two twenty engine. I said, "Send me to two twenty. It was one and one there. My dad's old company. So I worked a day tour out there. And they had a single house watch at that point. They connected the uh, they, yeah. they broke the on the wall. It, you know, they changed, but they this fight went on like thirty years. Nobody even knew what it was about. Uh, yeah. Any guys that work with your father there the day you worked? Or uh, no, nobody was working there. They knew him because they had the names up on the wall. You know, brick. They wrote the names of the guys who used to be there. But right, you know, that was years later. It was, it was in the eighties. My dad was still, you know, was still alive. He had just retired, but uh, nobody there. You know. <laughs> So you never got it. You got it in 79. You never got a chance yeah. to work with him at all? No, he was on light duty at that point. He was down at fire prevention. They got in hurt at an explosion at a uh, oil tank fire down in South Brooklyn. And he oh. got knocked down the hill and he hurt his wrist. And they said, you know, he said, you know, that's it. I'm not going to get hurt. Had gotten hurt once before. Before mm -hmm. he got burned, um, asphalt hit him on his hand, burned him. So between those two injuries, he says, you know what? Maybe I'm getting too old for this. Let me just mm. sit back and the last couple of years of my career and just coast out, which is what he did. Yeah, so let's talk about you, bro. What did he take you to the firehouse when you were a kid? What, oh god, what? yeah, I lived there. My aunt and uncle <laughs> lived like three blocks away. There's a place on 9th Street called the Diamond Post, and they lived diagonally across on the other side of the street. So we were there on a regular basis, paydays. We go down there and stuff like that. And it was great. Then he'd give me his old boots and I put them on, run around the house and put on a plastic helmet and grab a, a pan cover. And that was I was the teledriver. So you knew, the <laughs> so you knew right away then, bro. I knew then. Yeah, oh, yeah, it was it was game set and match then. Any any brothers too on the job or just you? No, I had two cousins on the job. My, my cousin Mickey Calderelli was the captain of two twenty six, and he retired, passed away a couple years ago. And his brother, oh. my other cousin Johnny, is still alive. He's out in Long Island. He was oh. in two hundred two. He stayed his whole career there. So that you know, was when he first became name? cops. What was the last name? Calderelli. Calderelli. Me, Calderelli. Oh, I, my first cousin, first cousin, 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 guys, you know, they got, they got, they're everywhere. Right. So, the rest of the family became cops. Uh, uh, Refrano's Italian meter started, oh, like, you know, like. <laughs> the <laughs> meter Wait, wait, wait. Calder, Cal 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 what? Did that uh, name end in an I? What? It ended in an I O U? A E I O U? What? Because there was another, I know there was another Italian guy that in 202 that was there a long time. Oh, one guy. Yeah, there's one Italian guy in 202. No, he was there for like 40 years. Oh, was he? 202, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was there a long time, John. He was there like thirty years. Maybe it's that's amazing. the guy. Maybe it was him. Maybe. Yeah. Well, he. Oh, you know, uh, uh, well, he was a big guy, Johnny. Well, you probably you would know him. You remember Calderell? You remember the name? No, that's, I don't uh, think Ruffy, that was. Yeah, it's not the, it. the, the the olive oil stands off his skin as soon as he hears about another time. Like, what? What? <laughs> one on one was great. We'll fight anybody. He puts he get a full army. We surrender like the next day. <laughs> <laughs> like like, I don't that. <laughs> a two twenty six uh, is what Cobble Hill done it. It's a nice pastry. No, it's there. it's on Red the other side of it's on State Street on the other side of Atlantic Avenue. Yeah, I know what it is. It's, it's, a little, it's an old little yeah, it's an old, oh, it's a small little old house. Yeah, I don't know if that's Cobble Hill. Maybe I think that's what Del Coward was for a while, wasn't he? Two twenty six or two twenty four. Two twenty six. No, two twenty six. Right, right, right. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. So you can take a short ride and get some nice pastries over there. 
Yeah, go to Junior's, grab a cheesecake, not a walk. Oh, oh there you Jordan. go. See? The guys out there with Junior's. Watch Blue Bloods. You'll hear about it. That's good Jordan. living. Tootie. Yeah, Tootie. Tootie. All right. So listen, <laughs> you get you, you rock, you, you got a little baking pan. You're to be the Tilla guy when you're a kid. Uh, you get on in 79. When did you take the test? You took the test, I guess, the one with the ledge and the pull up. That was a hard test. Yeah, right? the physical test. Yeah, that was extremely difficult. But it was all job related. Yeah. And it really required upper body strength and, and a physical ability. And that was, you know, kind of what it was at the time because there were females taking the test. And the rumor was they made this test, but it was job related. You, If you could right. do this, you could be a firefighter. It wasn't like, you know, something silly. You had to scale a small wall. You had to drag, you know, carry a dummy upstairs, do a ledge walk, wearing an SCBA, just just a mask, not on your face, just the, the tank itself. Right. Oh, there was an arm hang that was uh, the two, minute, arm, two minute arm hang, right? Or something like that? Well, you had to hang for a minute before you got points. Right. So that was dead time. So if you fell or let go like this, right. you got zero. You had to hang, and then the points started to click on. So the longer you hung, the better you did. And right. that so was two cool. minutes, you would get 100. You would have had 100 points. 100, yeah, if you do uh, any over two minutes, right. was, I think 220 was 100. And then wow. you got two chances at everything. So if you messed up, except for the mile run. So if you messed up the first one, you could do the second one, and, and you'd be all right. But it was tough. I ended up being 858 on the list out of like 8,000. So I, I felt pretty, yeah. you know, pretty lucky. Wow. And I what, got a, on, like, what a refreshing thing, a competitive test. Isn't that a really refreshing was, <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Merit-based anything? Stop what kind of a, it. No, what? Easy. What? No. what? Old. I didn't get any points for moving in Brooklyn. I think I actually yeah. took some points away from me from moving in Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. Because the test was in Brooklyn, so we all had to walk yeah. in and went down from the smoke. You know, you couldn't stand up. So it was, yeah. it was tough, but I, I managed to get through it. Today, today they give you like eight chances. Come on, I know you could do it. Come on. I, I, we're behind you. Come on. <laughs> we're behind you. Yeah, we're behind you, pushing you up a cliff. Come on. Uh, like that CrossFit you know, face positivity when you go to a CrossFit class, uh, right? You don't make you, it. Here's you, a card, somebody. When we did the my run. They couldn't even tell you to pick up your pace. The guy was like, I "Can't tell you." The fine. He goes, I'll, "I'll do rub my nose." When so when you come by like the tenth lap, whatever it was, so he's like this. I'm, I said, "Oh God, I can't." Oh. <laughs> he almost rubbed his face, nose right up his face with me. But I, you know, we worked out all right. Yeah, imagine if you had like a real itch. Oh like guy dies of a heart attack. I was behind. <laughs> it was. It was tough. It was a hard test. Did but you, you know what? It was good. It was. Did, did you do anything in between, or you knew you? That's the only test you took. You went right to the. Well, that was it. The one test I took, the written test, which was pretty simple. Uh, I took the physical and got hired. I think the physical was in uh, '78. I think I took it in April of '78. I got hired in February of '79. Oh. So it was, I was. They went by alphabetical. So I was asked. So it was towards the the back of the group guys taking it. Uh -huh. And uh, the list came out in September of '78. Uh, Chief Turner, Commissioner Turner, I apologize. Commissioner Turner was on that. Was in one of the first classes. And Principio, my old captain, captain, right. my captain, he was actually skipped because he wasn't 21. He had to wait till the next class in November. Uh, he should have been high in October, but he was too young by a few days. And there's no, you know, there's no room. So you're not. So he, he, he basically, he's still to this day, he's your bop, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm his. But I'm older than him by a month. So he's a little punk kid telling me what to do. It's not fun. <laughs> yeah, but he got skipped to the next class, didn't he? No, but he no, no. He still got on before me by three months. Oh, oh, oh I thought they skipped. But he got his spot. No, I wish. Oh God, that'd have been. Oh, huge. that would have been great. But I'm still a month older than him, so you know, smack yeah. him around, hit him on the head, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Pete. You know what? Uh, and all this, and all this uh, funny stuff going on. I kind of forgot what the uh, the word of the day was. I can't even throw it in there. <laughs> oh, well, you know, if if uh, Lieutenant Blabs here. <laughs> oh! Pete, Keeps talking. We're never gonna get the word of the day in. There you let go. Me, let me write okay, that down. So time frame tonight. You know, you're gonna... <laughs> so I don't forget it again. Let me write it down. I think I think he he put. I saw him put on the fans page. Uh, uh, the captain wrote something like, "I'm not gonna be able to watch it tonight, but uh, I'm gonna be able to watch it two days from now, and I'm sure he'll still be on talking." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he knows me so well. <laughs> oh, that's great, man. <laughs> Hey, as a fellow talker, no worries, bro. Oh, we like no. we have you here to talk. Listen, I don't think either one of you got anything on on Champo, bro. Champo is going to be a six hour show when he comes on. Yeah, oh, they said God. that we should get together in the same room, but we don't know who can stand there and keep the clock with a guy. I don't care. Yeah. I don't see it with you, no. Champy. I see it with. Not you. <clears throat> yeah, he's got well, good stories, know. though, man. We'll get him on. What's no, he no, retiring? No. Oh, uh, I, I don't know. Soon, I think though. I know he first chance he gets. The first chance. We'll I'm get him. Sure. Oh, yeah, he's, on the light duty, he's on the light duty junket, Ruffy. You know what that means, right? So. Oh, he's ready. 
<laughs> He's ready. All right, so Proby School is six weeks, and then you go to what is now known as Squad 18 back in the day. It's Engine 18 down right. in, what, Greenwich Village? That's Greenwich right. Village, yeah. They lost the uh, five guys in the 23rd Street fire, and some of the guys I worked with were actually working for that fire, Work with those guys. Now, the guys <laughs> here in the picture, the guys immediately to the left, standing up is Lieutenant Baggett, uh, Firefighter Baggett at the time, who became Queensboro Commander Baggett. Oh, right. shit. Lieutenant Williams was one of the guys. He never worked the mutual because of the 23rd Street fire. Because some guys that worked the mutual and they were killed, so he would never do another mutual. He worked straight to us. Right. And right. then the guy, the guy kneeling down to uh, Lieutenant Williams below him is uh, Dom Drubio. He was a battalion chief in safety. And my first captain, Captain Rossi, you know, standing next to me in a red shirt. And the guy all the way to the right. Well, got the guy before the guy to the right. You got his name is Bobby Lopez. He's 80 years old. He looks exactly like that today. Really? Come on. A unit a couple weeks back. He looks phenomenal. Wow. He I, didn't know, uh, I didn't know that Carrot Top was a fireman, bro. Look at that. Carrot hey. Top. That's, his name is Gary Slattery. His uncle was Whitey Ford. What? Oh, uh, shit. His, my, his uncle was Whitey Ford. They lived in Howard Beach. I knew a guy that lived in Howard Beach. He's and Howard Beach. And he, yeah, he's a Howard Beach guy. But, uh, yeah. And the other guy, the other guy, Dion down there. Yeah, this, this Chief Baggett. No shit. Oh, wow. he was funny. He was a company man from the very beginning. I, I loved him. He was talking at some of the kitchen table. He turns, he goes, he's a probie now. And he decides to give us an opinion. He goes, well, you have to understand how the city thinks about this. And we all went, what did you just say? So we knew right then, <laughs> but he was a, he's a smart guy, a, a great guy. I love yeah. him. That's you one know, of the, the last, there's only a few firehouses that still have the uh, spiral staircase in the back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they still yeah. have the spiral staircase yeah. there. Whack my head on that many a times. Oh, my God. I used to oh. Black and blue. The one yeah. guy's got the young seventies, eighties cut off jean uh, jean shorts there. Did you see that guy in the front? Yeah, that's the early eighties because Captain Rossi was still there. He left about eighty one, <laughs> so that's either eighty. Oh my god! <laughs> and the and the white socks with the Adidas. White sock yeah, man, yeah. yeah. With the, yeah. the old school like <laughs> red, white, I, and listen, blue. It, it's better oh, off yeah. scaling down though. You know what I mean? If he was standing uh, up. Ah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That you was know, Oh well, he he was a great guy. He was a, he he was wearing white because he's an angel now. He actually had a bad heart, had a heart transplant some years later. Oh, he didn't take, here. Yeah, he was a nice oh, guy. I'm making fun of the guy. Great guy. I'm making fun of the guy. He's making but, fun of us right now, too. Up, up had, there. Oh, no, I had fun with that. I called up the hospital to check on him. Hey, how's, how's he doing? This is back before he had the HIPAA laws and stuff. So nurse goes, well, he's doing good. So I'm like, well, you know, I said, the president is very interested in this. He said, <laughs> she goes, the president of what? I said, the United States. I work for him. And Tommy's a friend of ours. So... Okay, well, thank you very much, sir. No problem. I said, listen, let me give you my personal number. You can call me anytime. I give him my cell number. I said, reach me anytime, anywhere on this number. So she goes in to see him. He goes, everything's good, Mr. Mr. Driscoll. Everything. I talked to Mike. The president's been informed of your, your condition. He's like, the president. He goes, he works for the president. He's a he's a lieutenant. So anyway, you can you can, you can be as anybody on the phone. And oh yeah, man. This is a nurse. This is personal education. Believe me. Oh, shit. You even know me. Back in the you 80s, know, that outfit, you see, you get away with that outfit in the 80s. You walk in, you know it's the 80s because if he was walking around like that today, bro, oh, somebody... Yeah. <laughs> somebody, <laughs> somebody it was a bill. I don't want to say nothing. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. There was Not that there's Listen, anything wrong with that. If wrong. you're into that, that's fine, you know? Whatever makes you smile. None of my business. <laughs> None of my business. Did you line. catch any words yet? Yeah, I'm sorry. Wait, that's not an 18. That's I mean. an 18 right there. No, no, that's that's 18 18 and he truck. lost control of the meal. And so, Get, you know. put that, that's an 18. All truck. right. I had it labeled it as 18. We did a lot of weird things in 18 engine. Like, we were the manpower from Marine Company 2. When Hi-X Phone came out, we were Hi-X Phone engine. When yeah. the Lorenzo Ladder came out, we were Lorenzo Ladder unit. Now, I know a lot of guys going, what's a Lorenzo Ladder? It was the original high rise nozzle and a high rise rescue. It was basically <laughs> a, a secured ladder with two wires that loops on the end. It would put a bar inside and outside the building, it would wedge it so you could climb up and go into the floor above, get a harness on, or put a ladder pipe on it and use water. This Lieutenant Lorenzo from Midtown Manhattan designed this thing. This was back in the 80s. Anybody, they, they mentioned it one time in NYFs in the fourth issue of 89, they mentioned the Lorenzo ladder as a unit that will be responding on a high rise fire. That's the only place I've ever found it written, but we, we were one of those. Did we you ever did use that. it? No, never. <laughs> yeah, because, no, you can imagine some chief letting us have 65 floors up to the 60s. Yeah, but you know what? Because okay. it was the 80s. Now, yeah, if, 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 if that was today, today that's like a good thing. Yeah, if yeah, that yeah, was oh, today, you'd be happen. doing that every week. <laughs> yeah, right up the Lorenzo ladder. <laughs> so we backed up the satellite with a manpower. We did a lot of like hmm. weird things because we were a single engine. We were able, it was a lot of fun. Went to Queens, some fires. We fought some fires in the fireboat in Jersey. Some cold really? nights. We had Huey Lennon, the, fa the father now. He's a 30-truck guy. 
was one of our lieutenants. We're fighting this fire in Jersey. It's Pierre's going from stem to stern. And we're putting more. It's like 10 degrees out. We're covered with ice. And we go back. And obviously, they had hot chocolates for us to drink <clears throat> in the uh, boat. So that was a fun time. Beautiful. And, uh, we had a lot of fun. It was a little well, more. How are you the back up to, to the Marine Company? Like, if they got a job, you or you well, just before that, they used they had manpower, but that manning became an issue back in the 70s. So what they would do is they would assign an engine company. And we were the engine company from Marine Company 2. And we would go there, bring the rig down. The chauffeur would jump us off, drive the rig back to quarters, wait for us. We get on the boat and go wherever, and then we first the uh, thing when we got back. What that was he doing? I was just gonna say, oh. what a great gig that must have been. Yeah, oh, that was great. Right. You're, you're yeah. in the boat, freezing your ass off. You yeah. just, uh, that wasn't fun. The summertime was nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, was, I never heard of that before. But, but yeah, uh, well, you know, they needed guys for the oars. You know, someone had to row the boat, so you know, we were it. <laughs> and long time stroke. Ago. Somebody had to do the whip. Oh, psh, stroke. Yeah, stroke. the officer had the mallets. We just kind of rowed. <laughs> Did you catch any notable jobs there or not? It was 18? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we had well, we had the Forbes fire, the Forbes uh, magazine fire. That was the second alarm. We uh -huh. were first new engine. I mean, um, there were different things. It was it was an occupied area. We used to go to the, the Lower East Side, Alphabet City, a lot. So we'd be over by 2811. We'd relocate over there or 17 engine or 15 engine, which had the smallest door on the job. And they had a chauffeur there that their door was so small, they had a, a car mirror on the chauffeur side because the two mirrors wouldn't fit. And this guy would go across the street and fly back like 80 miles an hour. Right <laughs> in. Like, you should have crashed. No, nope, right in. Because That's this guy's ace. Right? So we'd be catching a lot of vacants on the other on the lower east side. That was kind of the force. Yeah, they did, they did work over there, man. In the, in the oh, yeah, no. Alphabet yeah. yeah. City back then, it was like the Wild West. Yeah. They killed the guy in front of 2011 one time. He was banging on doors, and the guys caught up with him, the drug dealers, and they shot him to death right in front of the firehouse. Really? Yeah, we were there once. They was doing drugs across the street, and once we see two cars pass by. And there's like a little buzz on the street. Like, what's going on? They were cops. What was an old drug? Now, they, right next door to fires, they come in, shotguns, rise with bulletproof vests. In they go. They arrest like three people, and they drive away now. Five minutes later, the drug dealers are back up and running. It was yeah. just crazy. Oh, it, was, yeah. it was a dangerous area. They got their cars broken into every every other, every other like, hour. It was ridiculous. 18 had a narrow door, too, for a fire. It was pretty narrow. Yeah. Right there. yeah it was, it was, we, we could fit that. We didn't have to take any mirrors off and stuff. Unless the chauffeur didn't know what he was doing. Then he did it right. by himself. <laughs> Or he took some lug nuts off, Lug nuts, Louis. I knew. Yeah. Lug nuts. Yeah. Yeah. No. We Louis had Bishop. cable back then. Manhattan cable. Now, guys outside the city wouldn't understand, but all there was was Manhattan cable back in the day. Right? So when the Islanders had their four hockey seats, they won four in a row. Four, we had about 25 cops in quarters every game. Really? There were guns everywhere. It was, it was crazy. It was sitting there. It was, Who's watching the streets? Well, wow, wow, we're watching the game. Yeah, hockey game's on. Fuck it. Yeah. yeah. See, it was crazy. It was crazy. A lot of fun, though. But it was a good place to work. A lot of young guys. We got into sports, the softball, the basketball. Uh, we had uh, so many good guys that uh, just played ball. It was a young house. In fact, we had a covering lieutenant one time, this guy, Jack Pritchett. You may have heard Never of him. Heard, never heard of him. Uh, never heard of him. Uh, never heard of him. Uh, <laughs> he did something. He came. We hear a job come in in Brooklyn, go to like a second alarm. Next thing we know, we're getting relocated to 280 engine. Like, where's 280? So up on the back step we go, and off we go to 280 because we rode the back step. He pulls up at the fire, gets off a hey, chief 18 engine, you're ready to go to work. There's a whole building on fire, like a vacant going right around the corner from 280 engine. So she goes, Oh, you're like a third alarm engine? He goes, No, no, we're relocating to 280, but we're here to do work. She goes, Go to 280. We sat there for three hours, did nothing. But he got us relocated to Brooklyn. And to he tried to get it. in there and he tried to get in there. He tried to get in. Yeah. Jack was, for him. Well, I worked with him in Brooklyn later on, and we'll talk about that. But uh, this was my first experience with him, and he just wanted to go to fire. And we're like, Yeah. He loved us. He yeah, wanted to take our firehouse and move us into a busier area. He goes, because you guys want to do work and you're trapped. It wasn't yeah. what yeah, it was. Yeah. Do, you still I mean, talk, do you still talk to him? Uh, actually, he did text me. He said, you better mention 157 tonight or else. So <laughs> I, I, How about getting him on? You didn't want to come on the show. We can't get him to come on. I'll talk to yeah. him. I'll ask him. Okay. He's, he's watching tonight. So, you know, Chief, you got to come on the show. They come let on, me in. They'll let you in. Come me. on. Come on. Okay, he's a good guy. He's a great guy. He was, uh, he was, he was just uh, a lot of fun. Uh, he was a great lieutenant to work with in Brooklyn. I'm going to get to that. And a great captain in the engine. And there's a couple of stories with that that you won't believe, but uh, just yeah. fun stuff. But 18 was great. The guys were good. The captain was seeing the guy in the picture earlier. He had like 35 years in Harlem when he came down to work there. 30 years in Harlem. He was a good farm. Never panicked. Never screamed. Never hit the air horn. <clears throat> he hit the siren. The air horn was a chauffeur's thing. So yeah. something I learned as an officer, right? You know what? The chauffeur does this, the horn. I do the siren because he's sitting like he's driving the car. Little things you pick up from guys along the way, you know. Yeah. One guy passed away. His name was Dickie Wright. He was a senior guy there at the time. And they all worked with the guys from the 23rd Street fire. 
And uh, this one guy, Jerry Sarzano, actually had his group changed about two months before the fire because the two guys wanted to work together, and they were both killed that day. Wow. But he would use every pot twice a night. And as a pro, <laughs> you were cleaning it, baby. <laughs> here it is again. Here it is again. <laughs> How many we have like eight pots? I've done 22. Did <laughs> I just clean this pot? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my guy had dishpan hands. I'm going to go and match in the old commercials. Did you know, Madge. You know, oh, you know, he's paid himself. Madge. You know what's funny, Mike? When, uh, when I first got promoted, that's like, like you said, there were cer certain guys, like guy 102, senior guy. I went to hit the 84 button on the uh, on the MDT. On the, on the MDT, and he had it turned around to him, you know? And so I went to grab it, turn around. I was like, no, no, Lou, I got, I got it. I'll, I'll take care. Of, I'll take care of all that stuff. I'm like, oh, all right. So when we get back to court, is I'm like, uh, what else do you want to do? <laughs> you know what I mean? like, Let me know. Like, Let me he know. said the same thing. He said, I'll take care of the horn. You take care of the siren. So, and I was a young lieutenant, man. So every place that I went, if I saw it, obviously it's going to be a senior guy most of the time. I would just go over to him and say, you know, hey, listen, what do you want to do? Until I had enough time to say, you know, when I get on the rig and uh, just said, you know, whatever. But yeah, it is funny that you say certain guys. Yeah. Yeah, certain but guys you know, like, right. like we yeah. had this guy Bob Davis from five trucks. So I'm a I'm a young backup chauffeur because we had to have so many chauffeurs for the backup for uh, you know satellite one. Satellite, yeah. When engine nine was out of job, we were back up satellite one. So I pull up in front of the building, I stop right by the door. The whole one I can go right into the entrance and multiple door. And I'm like, this is perfect. I'm doing great. My first thing. Here comes five truck and Bobby Davis. Move that effing truck out of the way. So I pull up because I'm like, oh god, he's got like 20 years on. I got like an hour and a half, and I'm driving the truck. <laughs> He goes, I got 100 feet of area. You got 10,000 feet of hose. Move the truck. I'm sorry, Bobby. Don't yell at me. Well, I didn't know. I said, I'm parked here. The guys yeah. can stretch right in. It's an easy stretch. Yeah. Like, apparently. No. But he did, got uh, feet of area. Okay. Were you the only probie that went there? No, there were four of us. The guy, Dom Rubio, that I was talking, he ended up being a battalion chief. Right. Uh, my buddy, who I was only guy who was ever uh, best man, this guy, Fred Serber, he was a marshal. He retired a couple years ago. And another guy, Mike Kroon, he retired some years ago. He got injured and left out. He was a long, long time ago. He's been gone. But there were four of us. And I was the shortest one at six foot. These guys are like, how big is this probie class? Like, yeah, I'm the small guy in the class. And yeah, it was great about six four. The other guys were six two and six one. I, you know, I'm the little guy. But uh, wow. it was a great place. A really good like, single engine. It was, it was great. It was a lot of fun. And, you know, you learn. Yeah. Yeah, high rise. I had to carry packs up and down. The village has every kind of building imaginable except Queen Anne's. They have rear tenements, commercials brownstone type of manhattan brownstones just every building you can imagine wood frame so you learned you know a lot and then going to the lower east side with the vacants you were seeing these big buildings you run up and down you know you got fireball you fire above and you got three hand lines operating yeah. it was a different type of operation but it was it was so much fun what was that neighborhood like when you when you got there in the 70s because now you can't you know oh it was it was, it was obviously a gay community and stuff but uh celebrities uh most people were pretty decent, you know, nice people. That they, they, they took care of the neighborhood. The occupants were great. We had windows got blown in one night. We got a call. We did with something. Windows had blown in on West Street. These big giant windows. We go upstairs. We see the curtains flapping around, and there's glass embedded in the wall. This guy's cut. So five seconds later, we see like a big giant light outside the building. We look out. It's a news crew. And in Manhattan, that's not unusual. There's no. always news crews. So we start looking around the building, make sure everything's okay. It blew actually blew an air conditioner, a big one, right out of sleep. The wind was so great. We were right on the ground. It's amazing. I don't know. No so we see this it. guy and his wife. His wife's taking him. She goes, I'm a doctor. Like, okay, no problem. And we see him and her in the picture and President Reagan. I'm like, wow, it's pretty impressive. It doesn't look like a cardboard cutout. Then we look on the baby grand piano to the right. And we see him, his wife, and the Pope. Like, who is this guy? <laughs> he was Dan Rather's boss. He was in charge of CPS. Oh, is that Canada. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was a news crew. He called them up, said, get here now. And they showed up. But you don't know who you're gonna meet in the village. You know, like the, the celebrities, politicians, uh, all kinds. Yeah, of yeah, those yeah. guys. It was a, it was no, a lot of fun. And then when Country Western came in, it was a Country Western up the block, and none of the girls wore pants. Apparently, they just painted stuff on their legs because so they couldn't get ah, any pants. That's pants. horrible. That's how I don't. Oh, know. Oh, I kind of I don't. Oh, yeah, I don't, don't have any of those pictures. Yeah, yeah, those pictures of that. that. Awful, awful. <laughs> yeah, it was a good place. It was a lot. Of they got any, they got any triple subcells over there in? Uh, <laughs> yeah, subcells on 14th yeah. Street, the old Salvation Army building. You go down a mile and a half. It's like Louis out. Louis out. Then we had the, the biggest thing we had, one of the biggest things, yes, about fires. We had uh, the train crash on Union Square. Train derailed, killed a bunch of people. Mm. We were third new engine, so we responded to that. Wow. That was that was kind of crazy. See these big train cars wrecked. 
you're like, oh my God, wow. you, know, you look small next to him. You don't realize it. Yeah. yeah. I was under a tunnel. Manhattan, you know, it's kind of unusual. But uh, that's the thing about Manhattan. Anything goes there, bro. Anything can happen there, man. Those guys all see kinds crazy of crazy stuff. stuff. And emergency yeah. season stuff, you know. Yeah. So what you you did 13 years there, huh? According to no, 11. Your... All right, my math is off. So you did 11 okay. years there, right? Well, I was going to do nine, but there were no transfers. <laughs> yeah, years. So 11, years. 11 years. It was a lot of fun. The guys, it was yeah. time to go before that. But then when the transfers came down, uh, Captain Drennan called me up the night before because he worked in five truck. And he goes, hey, Mike, you're going to 157 tomorrow because he had recommended I put in for that. And then wait, I got this. Wait, wow. wait, wait. We got to roll that back a little bit. He just put in for 157 and he got it. Wait, uh, oh, we got 11 oh, years on. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. everybody. Uh, oh, we outpo- Ruffy, he outpointed everybody. I outpointed everybody. Yeah. Well, you, you want to play uh, basketball? Uh, then, you know, Jimmy Rich is one of me over there, you know, the father. He said, yeah. Mikey's coming. But he was out of there by then. Yeah, no, that's all it was. I didn't have a hook. I had oh, that man. man. I'm a cool guy. Gary. What the fuck is that? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> What 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 other companies did you happen to put in for? The captain oh, Drennan, huh? Well, I called 111, and I didn't have enough time. So they said, have another guy. The captain wants someone to come across the floor. So I didn't put in. I had put in for 108. It was the other truck. On it, Nick. Oh, you would have been over there with Fat Daddy. It's 157, right. huh? 157. One of my favorite places. I like that place. What are Rogers? Yeah. I, right, just, I just worked there in September because I knew I was getting to get out. I, I thought in uh, today. So I talked to uh, Angelo Sacco. He just got made captain. He was a lieutenant there. I called up some friends. They said, hey, listen, this guy will switch with you because he worked with a lieutenant, this guy, Scott Deal, who just got to the truck the last order from the engine across the floor. And uh, I worked there a day tour. And uh, we ran around. And two of my friends, Mark Merrill, who Timmy mentioned about the engine guy, he took the can because he's an engine show, but he took the can. And uh, John uh, New- New- uh, Newbauer was yeah, my yeah, chauffeur. Yeah. And he was a probie when he got there when I was there. No, so shit. I work with two guys. Oh, we had a bunch of runs. We didn't catch any work figures. They caught a job that night when I left, which is my luck. I always caught work there. Right. Always, oh, always, yeah, it was always good, a lot of fun. And it was, we had cigars. Guys called up. We used to work with some guys came in. It was just a great day. I even bought them once. Yeah. Did they have the toilet bowl still right, in, you know. in the ceiling there? They have the toilet bowl still in the ceiling there? No, we used to do flashovers <laughs> on the ceiling. Did they ever tell you about that? <laughs> the no, kitchen was small. You walk in, we had a frying pan going like two inches of oil, and we'd crank the heat up. And we bring a detail on how you doing, how's it going? And the guy would sit with toss an ice cube in from like 10 feet away and would flash over your heads. So you had to hit the ground. <laughs> flash over <laughs> simulator, right in the kitchen. Right in the kitchen. We had this guy, uh, we call him Bonsai, Dennis Barnes. You bring in the cake and guys want to come to the company, they bring cakes in and cupcakes, what have you. And he'd, he'd open up, this is, this is fabulous. Look at this cake. This is wonderful. We would, and they right in the garbage pail and walk out of the room. <laughs> yeah, and the guy yeah, would just yeah, like... Yeah. I just spent fifteen dollars uh, on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we had to stop awesome. doing that. We couldn't do the flash showers anymore because Georgie Johnson, the guy in the nine eleven photo with his hands on his hips looking up, retired yeah. a tie chief a couple years ago. Um, <clears throat> he gave bone marrow to a kid whose name was Forrest. Yeah, like Forrest Gump. I couldn't believe this. The kid's name is Forrest. <laughs> Lived in Arkansas, saved his life. So they had a whole big thing in November of ninety seven. Like two days after I got promoted, the mayor came. Giuliani, you know, the mayor. Uh, everyone was there. And they took them out of the town the whole night. So they said, listen, no more flash was in the kitchen. You're burning up the ceiling. Because one night we had to stretch a line. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. Oh, you know, there's a vent system there. Who knew? Yeah. Who learned this stuff? You mean well, it goes up? That's Who where the, to- the toilet bowl, mm-hmm. like when you looked up, there was a, a small square vent there. Right? And they had a toilet bowl in the ceiling, allegedly. And it would fill up with water. The tank would fill up. And then they had something where they had like a little switch or a string or something. And if you walked under it, they would pull it. And the toilet, it was clean water, but it would let go and oh. it would get soaked through the vent. <laughs> I can so, see that. I can see that happening because there was no, you know, it was it had like little things that would, would shoot water. Oh, it was crazy. They were crazy. Right. The story wall three, they took the doors off the closets because the chief came in and said the doors and the uh, kitchen cabinets need to be clean. They said, no problem, chief. We'll take care of it. Came back next day, they were gone. Problem solved. <laughs> The figure <laughs> in like the garbage <laughs> bills, they paid the yellow circle. They threw this stuff. The garbage bills were gone. It used to be on the floor, the throw the plates on the floor. Yeah, exactly. I was over there. I, I was detailed there a few times, you know, and well, throw the scraps on the floor. They would throw oh, the scraps funny. clean it. But then, yeah. what, what, uh, when you got there, had you done any truck work before? Or you just went right to 150. No, I had done some truck work. Well, you know, details. I mean, I went to 20 truck one time. <laughs> we got sent up to Harlem to. 50 uh, to what was it uh, 26 truck. We re- relocated. They had a couple of jobs going on. So we were like the third section. We caught like three jobs, like one little, two little jobs. One was good. We come back. The guy, John uh, Ciani, I believe his name was, the, the cookbook guy, he was yeah. cooking. 
This is back in like 1979. <laughs> I mean, no, I'm a pro. I'm a, in my hook. I have no idea what I'm doing. On the way back down, now they had caught a job. The two other caught, caught a job. We caught a job, or two, or three. We are going back down. It's midnight. We hit the dispatcher in Central Park because the lieutenant working in the truck, this guy in Lyons, he goes, I know a buddy. He goes, they, they caught another job. They were cooking at midnight. Still hadn't eaten. It was, it was that much fire back then. They were just going to fires constantly. But wow. it, was a, it was a great time. It was so a lot when, of when you got to 157, you know, busy busy truck there, did you feel like uh, uh, you're starting all over again? Like you were probably because you didn't really have that Yeah, I, I just paid attention. Yeah. Listen, I climbed in the sink like every other you know guy. And I'm like, no, you got some time. I said, hey, I got to pay my dues. I'm just another fireman, blue shirt. And you learn. Like, we had a Queen Anne, and one guy was up there. He said, don't leave me, Mike. I said, I'm not going anywhere. Because he came from an engine in Manhattan. They didn't know what, what your capabilities yeah, yeah, were. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Takes time. And then actually, uh, my buddy, this guy, Mike Lee, he's a chief who just retired. He called up another friend of mine who was a chief who just retired. Billy Monday used to be in charge of mask service. He goes, what's the story with this guy, Scott? He's always seems so nice. What's the story? And Billy goes, that's just him. It's, <laughs> this is it. He goes, okay. Yeah. And I did my work like everybody else, you know. I mean, broke our butts, caught fires. We, you know, we had some great officers working there, uh, yeah, like in '18. But we had we had this guy Bobby Boca. Uh, he actually, the story we heard was he did the last scaling ladder rescue in the city. He got a medal for it. He was a great farm, calm as could be. He'd be like this, with a cigarette. Yeah, one five seven Brooklyn. Yeah, ten seventy five. Five one five windows. But call him for a water leak. <laughs> and it was a trip in the What the <laughs> hell are you? What? <laughs> yeah, nothing crazy. That twisted him. Great guy, a great officer. And we had Pritchett with my one of my lieutenants there. And he had a oh, thing. He had to run away with his coat over his arm. We would come out of the rig. What the, the, where the hell did he go? He would just run into the building. You know, so that was a little bit of getting used to that. And uh, Charlie McGrath was the captain there. Uh, busiest man I've ever met. Worked Busy? on the side of two roofs. Like the guys that are watching this, you're like, we don't know these guys, but you know guys like this. This guy would go work a night tour, go home, rip off a roof because he did roofing, come back and work another 24. I said, Cap, when do you sleep? Go, ah, whenever I can. I, <coughs> okay, Cap. You know what? He was just insanely busy. Rig was broken. He was on the day with a wrench, the first guy pushing the chauffeur out of the way. Like just yeah. up to his elbows and work. What a great guy. <clears throat> and, and, you know, uh, just, just a good fire officer. Never and, panicked, it wasn't, cool. and it wasn't like he was doing roofing and then going to a slow house. He's going to a house where he's oh, getting no. his ass kicked. Yeah. Yeah. No, he, he came in and went through it, but he was always neck deep in it. Like, so you had to do what he did. Like, if we right. were second, dude, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. he led by he off the ring, right? You, you don't sit there and go, What's he doing? It's like, oh, <laughs> but that's how guys work. <laughs> right? They emulate their boss. If the boss is like, Yeah, relax, stay back. Well, then everyone goes, Okay. But yeah, Louis, went, Louis, Louis, <laughs> Louis learned that lesson really early on when uh, he didn't put his bunker gear on, right? At a pull box. The first right, box. Yeah, yeah. The squad. Oh, oh boy. And that's well, they still do that. When I well, worked there, they were still yeah. jumping off the rig with their gear and hoods on. Like, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah no, no, it's, I did, but I was like, okay, I've seen this and done this right way. That's it. It should be that way all the time. Same right. way all, all the time. for the purpose. Do your size. All the good stuff that we talk about. <clears> Learn. See what yeah. you got. You just run off like hell to skelter. What are you hearing on the radio? What are you, what are you seeing? What are you smelling? You know, whatever. Yeah. And if you just stay on top of your game, it's like a yeah. pitcher. Which comes in, he's got to throw a hundred pitches. His arm has to be solid for 100 pitches. It can't take a break 10 to 12 pitches. It's got to be 100% all the time. So when he throws a pitch, right, he's got, you know, you yeah. as an example, their, their stamina has to be like, well, the same thing for us. We have to have a stamina. You can't say, hey, listen, I had a rough night. Well, you know, you're going to have to suck it up, hmm. buttercup. Buttercup. <laughs> suck it up, buttercup. But, you know, it's nothing that guys can't do. Like, you know, I teach volleys and stuff up here now. I've never been a volunteer. And they, they, they always go, oh, manpower this, manpower that. You guys in Brooklyn. I said, well, we've been alone at fires. We pull up to a job. You know, we pull up by yourself. There's no engine. There's no truck. You're it until reinforcements arrive. So while we have 12,000 guys, they're not always showing up at the same fire. You know, yeah. you've only got a handful of guys. And that's why training is so important, going over things, practicing your basics, getting on my soapbox, aren't I? Apologize. Oh no, that's no, right. that's, that's well, why you're here. You got to pass the knowledge yeah. on. Yeah. And if you're if training you know, guys, train us. Right. Pitchers in the bullpen don't throw they don't lob the ball in. They throw the ball hard. So when they go into the game, they're throwing hard. They know what they're gonna do. Well, so if you that. practice wrong, you'll perform wrong under stress. And we learned that we took this mental performance mm -hmm. class a couple of years ago with Jason Breslow. He gives that uh yeah, he's like an Annapolis graduate. Yeah, he's a lieutenant in rescue now. I know what he's doing on this job, I have no idea. Very smart. But <laughs> that was like, yeah, Jason, you could be CEO of a company. What are you doing here? But, he, but he, he's really into it and he's great. But we learned that. And you say to yourself, you know what, you're right. 
you practice right, you're going to perform right. It's just yep. that simple. It's really just common sense. Yeah. Just do what you got to do. Yep. There's, no, there's no trick. Once you learn, do it. Right. Yeah. Is, what, uh, what was that phrase by, uh, not Vinny, but by that famous coach, uh, pra uh, practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. Right. Take it. You know, I played a lot of basketball. I wasn't a baseball guy. My kids are baseball. I'm a basketball <laughs> player. Right? So you take one jump shot, you hit it. Well, you haven't perfected it yet. You hit one jump shot. Hit a thousand like that. Now you've right. perfected it. Vince it's Lombardi, by the way, on that. That's his name, the coach. Our, that? Our, oh, the Vince, Vince, Vince Lombardi. Lombardi. Yeah, I've heard that guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. No, no, that's okay. No, I, but that that's what it is with training with the younger guys nowadays. Guys watching yeah. that are younger in different parts of the country, volunteers or, or career. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I always say this whenever I teach. A paycheck does not make you a firefighter. You know, you get, I get paid. I'm a firefighter. No, you're not. Not until you do the work. Wow, that paycheck sounds like a T-shirt, Louie. <laughs> a, paycheck, a paycheck does not make a firefighter. What do we got to get in 10% on that, bro? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Take it all. It's not a fixed income. We'll, we'll yeah. send you a mug. That's what paycheck we're talking about. <laughs> paycheck to paycheck. Paycheck to paycheck. But, hey, uh, when, yeah, you got just, to, when you got to 157, I know that Nick consistently now fairly busy, right? Ruffy, like when you hear jobs come in, it's always in the oh, yeah. area 157. Well, they have, a, they have such a huge area. And they yeah. turn out, they've turned out the same way. <clears throat> For years and years and years and yeah. years and years, There's, it does not matter what the box is. They are turning out yeah. the same way, running yeah, to the rig. Running yeah. to the rig. There's not. It doesn't <clears> matter. <throat> They're running to the rig. They're turning out the same way every time. Yeah. When you then, when you were was, there, was were they that busy too, or did they pick up work yeah. as they went along? Were they always? Well, the year before I got there, they were number one in the city because they had so many food on the stove. So they had shirts made up with a burning stove and a fireman standing next to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were always in the top two and three in that range because. <clears throat> It was a lot of one, you know, like one room, two room jobs, small, there's no like fourth alarms, which are kind of can be boring. Right. A lot of occupancy in a large response area. Like our response area huge. was huge. The truck, it's huge area. Huge. Yeah, huge. Like we have the boxes in, in the Bronx that yeah. we would go like we're a fourth alarm truck, they'd be first due truck. Yeah. This this was a totally different area. So you would go to more runs, right. <laughs> heavily populated Haitian, Jamaican, uh, black, Spanish community. I had a Jewish uh, also area. Side, you, had, you had a Jewish community, right. uh, Orthodox. Uh, yeah. So you had a real mix of, of, of people, and it was just a lot of work to do. You know, and every yeah. type of building. They had the Queen Anne's right. Had by a lot of Queen Anne's. Yeah. One forty-seven yeah. had all the Queen Anne's. Yeah, they were, and then able to go that way. It was uh, a lot of fun. In fact, one time they got, they were doing um, one thirteen's quarters over. They moved them over to two forty-eight's quarters, and they're, they're not too far from us. The same general area in Flatbush. So one forty-seven lost a few boxes because one thirteen moved down. And they were kind of like upset about it. And we go to a box one time and they said for them to get out of course with their tiller, they couldn't really turn. They had a supermarket cross street. There's always right, the yeah, 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 yeah. So they couldn't get out the door. So we beat them in. And the 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 roof I had the roof, and then the roof man comes in is my friend this guy Kevin White. He's a lieutenant in 56 truck now. And he's looking at me. I'm like, if I say anything to Whitey, he'll just throw me off the roof and not blink an eye. <laughs> they were twisted, they lost a lot of first two boxes, and we beat them in only because they couldn't get out the door. Like they had a right. tough time getting out. And it was it was like I felt bad, but uh, yeah, it's a great response area, large, a lot of uh, private dwellings, multiple. We had a high rise there. But tell the Bronx guys because I work in the Bronx. The Bronx guys yeah. think that no building in the Bronx is over three stories. In Brooklyn is over three stories. Right? Well, yeah. Brooklyn, nothing in Brooklyn is over three stories, and no yeah. stories in the three hours. But about, you know, yeah. same quiet. We do that stuff. But yeah, it was it was great, guys. And one time I actually drove the till. Let me go back a thing because I meant to mention it. I was the original Kramer. I said, well. You have a fire in the piers and five truckers there. No radios. So they said, you got to move the truck up. So I come up in it and sit there. Figure they're just going to move it up 10 feet. The chauffeur takes off. We're oh going against traffic God. on West Street. They're coming this way. And I'm like, hold it on. <coughs> oh, my God. And he said, who's in the back? I said, Kramer. And we just. <laughs> but they finally yelled him on the radio. This says, engine got there, not your truck chauffeur. But I was terrified. I said, well, wipe out. You know about the thumbs? You remember the thumbs? The thumbs. I right? didn't learn that stuff yet. I was only on wow. the job a couple of years. I didn't know anything about that. Wow. <laughs> well, the thumb was important. I did learn that one time. It was a hard lesson. I used, I, you know, I was hitchhiking and I got beat up because I used the wrong finger. And I didn't know that. <laughs> Thumb those things. Duh. Yeah, well, I didn't know what told me. So. But were you, yeah, still, were you a chauffeur there by the time you, by the time you left? Were you a chauffeur there? You in the At school? 18? I was, I was a backup chauffeur in 18. No, yeah. no, no. In 157. No, I didn't go to chauffeur school. You didn't? Nice. No. <laughs> wow. Well, I got on the yeah. list. I got there. I got on the list. So I was like, well, I'll be gone in a couple of years. No sense to send me. You know, a lot of guys went to uh, show for school. You know, uh, a couple of guys went to rescue. <clears throat> Guy Mike Quinn. Uh, you remember uh, Tom, Tommy Gardner? <clears throat> you know, we call him the squad father now. He's a uh, captain of squad eight. 
Oh yeah, 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 yeah of course. Yeah, he was not a big. He was he was into truck work. He was one of the guys who, who would teach and show me things like you know. That guy's been in some places, man. Holy oh, God. Tommy's just aces. He is, he is as intense as it gets. I'm not still, talking about you. Let me explain. Still, oh, still. he's like that crazy Eddie guy. Yeah, yeah, oh, he's the crazy Eddie. Guy. Our engines are insane. <laughs> yeah, that's the guy. But he's he's a great guy. And, uh, there's so many tonight. good guys there. But Pritchard was funny. Pritchard is a lieutenant in the truck. We catch him. Now he be captain of the engine retires. Pritchard gets made captain. Six months later, which is unusual in our job, he comes back as the captain of the engine. Yeah, he made some phone calls. He pounded yeah. on some desks, whatever he did, he comes back. So we're like, well, we got our guy in the, in the engine. Well, he was like, love the truck, hate the engine. Now it's love the engine. <laughs> Louis always says that, right? The best place you're at is the place you're at now. Right. Oh, God. So he gives right a standing now. order to the engine guys. Anybody's not down here, when I'm on the rig, everyone's on the rig, and you're the last guy, we're leaving without you. So everyone goes, okay, you know, Cap, we know the deal. Well, him and Charlie McGrath would do typing wars all night long. if they had <coughs> night, Until 5 in the morning. And at 5, 30, 6 o'clock, out he would go, unconscious. He was up all night. They get a run about 6, 30. He doesn't come down. Out the chauffeur goes. And he arrests down the blocks. <laughs> out he goes. He hears the rig. He slides the pole. They come back around. It was a nine-two. Right down the block. Comes back. The chauffeur driver is this guy. He's coming to bat. Because he didn't want to go to chauffeur school. He said because he had night blindness. I'm like, what are you out of your mind? You know, night blindness. <laughs> that was his excuse. Oh, well, yeah. We, we're creative, guys. Uh, I can't have the night. bat. <laughs> what are you, a bat? <laughs> yeah, Ron was found. Great guy. So he comes back in. Now, here, here we figure, here's where Pritchett's going to choke him to death on the app as for how do we write this up? So he starts, he goes, what do you think you're doing? He starts screaming about, because you said if everyone's in the rig and there's no one there, we leave without you. You didn't say except you. <laughs> Richard goes, fair enough, and walked upstairs. No shit. He was cool like that. Like, hey, I gave the order. I was the last one. I wasn't on the rig. I wasn't yeah, coming man. out. They went. Oh, it was just terrible. Wow, that's great, bro. Well, yeah, it, it could have been worse. It could have been a first dude job. So, Well, that's the thing. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> yeah. But we had them running one time. We found the, we found the signal mm -hmm. on our handy talkies to the scanner. We were able to. So one of the guys gets on the handy talk. He goes, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, 248 to Brooklyn Urgent. So we're sitting to see the two in the kitchen. The two officers go like this. Yeah, 1075. They give the coin right down the blocks for a job. They run out. It was a scam. We just messed up. They run out like lunatics. <laughs> yeah, it was a fun place. A lot of, a lot of good guys. Like most places that you work and you see. It's the same circus, different clown thing. Everybody's yeah. funny. Everybody's a comedian. You know, and some of the guys, some of the funniest guys I work with were this guy. Um, uh, to, uh, Charles, um Harry Gum would be the one. That, he would whisper to me funny shit. And I'd be sitting there laughing. And guys like, what's what's wrong with you? I said, did you hear what he just said? And I'm like, no. He would only tell me. And it was funny. <laughs> so I became in with me and he became the Johnny Carson. <laughs> I'd just sit there laughing and everybody would whisper. Oh, yeah, it was it was it was a lot, a lot of fun. A lot of good guys there. Yeah. And, and, this, and you know, I you, see you, you, know what you can't explain that to people who are not in the fire service. What goes on and how funny no. it is. And, and the uh, evil that guy too. Each person is so... Different, yeah, right? I mean, you can't different. explain that to people yeah. who have no idea about the fire service. They don't well, it's because of our sense of humor. Like guys who are watching this, if they're firefighters, and you know, we have no guidelines. You can't make fun yeah. of the wife or the kids. We kind of understand that, you know. Yeah. But there's no guidelines, and in the, in the uh, private world, there's guidelines. You could we, none of us would be working. We'd all be under arrest. Yeah. So we have a guy. Yeah. I, how, many, how many times do you hear that? <clears throat> too soon? Too soon? Yeah, it's too soon. <laughs> it's too soon? Yeah. I, I don't know how many times I heard my wife, like she was in the corporate world. And I said, why don't you just, why don't you just fucking do this? You know, like, she's like, this ain't the firehouse. You can't do that. Like, really? I'm like, what what do you mean you can't do that? No, we can't have that. So. Never liked yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> I never liked you. Yeah. No, yeah we had know. a guy there in, in, in 57. He went to the 4 1 battalion, uh, which is right down the road from us. Because he was a Vietnam vet, he was getting a little tired of stuff, but he was the greatest radio guy you've ever heard. They go, 4 1 to Brooklyn. Yeah, 1075. They go, What do you got? I got smoked down in my socks. I'll get back to you. And you hang the radio. <laughs> <laughs> smoked down in your socks. One time you like fell it. in the backyard, the ladder fell down. The officer goes, Yo, Larry, what's the, what's the report in the rear? Bleak. <laughs> 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 Bleak. Bleak. Uh, well, he said that one time. He goes, yeah, 4 one to Brooklyn. I got a job right in the 10th He goes, what do you got? I got a job. I can't talk now. I'll call you back. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. <laughs> did, 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 yeah, just oh, a great guy. Man. Just a funny guy. He, but he didn't realize. It. He was just telling him. He did some funny stuff. Like, oh, this crazy stuff. We'll move on with that. Smoke but um, he was just, he was a great guy. He was just, but his transmissions were priceless. You never know what was going to come out of his mouth. He just waited for him to make the transmission. Well, you nice. remember your first, uh, the first transmission you gave for a job? Yeah, it was yeah, actually well, at, uh, 
Yeah, it was a, it was a gas station fire. Where? And where I found out the power. It was in the, it was in the Bronx by as, as an officer, and yeah. I gave a ten seventy five for a gas station fire. The whole thing was going to cars, the store, everything. I said, send hazmat. Guess what happened? They showed up from Queens. <laughs> what? Or I had. What? <laughs> So right. we, we, we had that in Brooklyn, though. We, we had the were you calm and cool. Were you cool and collected? Were you, were you... Yeah, I, I guess. I don't know. I, I try to be, you know, I come try on, not on, to yell at you. That was me. I got that. <laughs> oh, but, you? Oh, that brings back memories. Let me tell you. That's dispatch. We got smoke down to our socks. What the fuck is that? The fuck is that? But we had, we had a lot of fun there. And we did have some bad times. And we obviously we were talking about the Valentino fire. I want to talk about that. That's oh, what yeah, yeah, yeah. About. Well, they had I, I got off that night before I came in the next morning. And they had, had a couple of jobs that night. And then that was like the third job on the 24th. So we go in as the first two truck. We see the smoke. 55 years at 1075. And I'm tr- I had the OV, the outside vent. So I'm trying to get behind where the fire is. There was a health club there, and it was behind the health club in an L shape. The health club was shaped like an L. It was an auto body place, right? It was an illegal chop shop, yes, yeah, what it was. Oh. We didn't even know it was there, because that was our BI district. We just didn't know it was behind this building. Right. And it was up a driveway, probably driveway had to be 100 feet, 150 mm-hmm. feet long from the street up to a, like a dirt driveway. It wasn't even paved. So anyway, I finally got around. I got into the building, and I'm going in, and behind me is the uh, is office from 174 and two guys from Rescue 2. And they're knocking the fire down. It's pretty much down. I have my mask on. It's pretty much knocked down. And all of a sudden, it sounds like this noise, like a garage door closing. So I turn to my left. I know the screen's backwards. And the two guys, the other three guys on the floor holding their helmets. And I'm like, so I took a few steps forward because there was a shelf. I think I run under the shelf. I thought it was a hand line hitting stuff on us. I turn back to the right. There's the roof. It was uh, lean to next to us, maybe by about four or five feet. So had we been five, six feet over, the four of us would have been killed. We never, we never know what hit us. Right. So we bailed out. We gave a collapse. They gave her urgent. We got out. And one of our guys, this guy Mike King, this guy Fish, we call him. I believe he's the one who found sort of boot sticking out of the rubble. And it was Louis Valentino. Now I knew Louis a little bit. He was a rescue two guy, great guy. He they used to call him Louis the Banger because he hit the softball country mile. And we used to play on a team in Staten Island. And we'll, he was I'll, in we'll, we'll that, right? Yeah, right. It was was that? He was in 147 before that, right? Before yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's why a lot of guys knew him. I didn't know him right. that well. I just knew him a little bit. We played softball with him a couple of times. Nice enough guy, you know. Um, and they pulled him out. And then Chief Gallagher, who was the former one commander, who was a rescue two guy, he he was all banged up. He had blood. And we're trying to, Chief, let's get you. And he's swinging at us. He's like, that's my guy. And they're like, oh, Chief, easy, easy. They Then the rescue two officer came there. And uh, Chief Fink, he was lieutenant. And Brian Fink was my officer. They backed away, let their guy pull him out. Uh, this guy in 255, I came on a job with your brother in law, Pete Schipoletti. Uh, he came on, he was in our squad. He gave the, the third alarm. So we have members trapped and collapsed. And then, like, you know, the cavalry came at that point because it was right. just a second alarm. But we were making progress with the fire. It was almost out. And what we think happened on the one wall, because it was a chop shop and they had columns of beams, beams, everything was mismatched. They were resting on a single set of uh, cinder blocks. And we think that the water hit it and it spalled. So it collapsed. So we just uh, went like this and a pancake down where we were. There was another section of the garage where there was a wall to our left about four or five feet. So that's why it hinged. Right. I think the wall, we, we, you know, that's exactly what it was. The wall kept it from falling flat on us. So it hinged at that oh, point. It was like a lean to instead of a pancake. Right. A pancake to the right of the, where we were and to the left was in the void was where we were. So we were able to get out. We were fine. <clears> Obviously, <throat> no, no injuries, thank God. Right. Uh, but they pulled Louis out. We put him on stretch. I helped with a bunch of guys bring him down. Uh, he he had we believe he was already deceased at that point. You know we saw him. You know obviously, it's it's a long time ago. Got him on the ambulance and off he went. And then we went back to quarters. The marshals came and investigated us. But I think that's what happened because it was not. It was a lot of fire, but they were knocking it down. We had two three hand lines in there. It should have killed twenty or thirty guys. And what happened was some of the engine two fifty five I think and three ten were between the cars. And when the roof landed, the cars oh, shit. held yeah. it up. They were on their knees. Had they been standing wow. up, they were in it would have wiped out a bunch of guys. So it was a miracle that we to kill, even though it was a terrible tragedy. So, uh, but it was, it didn't, no man. I mean, we walked in, it was like, out. I yeah. remember that. I remember we were going to, uh, I think, the ski races. I was just ready to leave to go to the ski races. That was in February, yeah. right? That job? Yeah, it was just, it right. was just the, uh, it was 96. So it would have been. Like 20, <clears throat> yeah, I think 20, that was my second funeral. Years, I think the, the guy from the rescue yeah. four was my first funeral. What was, um, 
Pete, uh, what the, what's the guy's name from Rescue 4, Louis? Uh, um, McLaughlin. 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 Right. I think that that the banger was. The yeah. So, right. So, McLaughlin was 90. Five? Four, 95. And then, uh, right. And then he was 90. Yeah. Yeah. Then we had the, we had the, the <laughs> there was a couple. There. I got job. on in 93. Only three guys died. Yeah. The, the guys, yeah. 170 Cavalry, 170 guys. They, they, that right. was all in that same time frame. Yeah. There was, I, like, there was like 10 guys who died <clears> in, I had, I had the Drennan. I was only on the job, but yeah, when Drennan and, uh, those guys died. Young and Steinberg. Yeah, I yeah. knew them all. I was only out of there a year, so I knew them. And uh, I Oh, that was from that area. You probably knew them, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They were 24 5. They were right down the block. Yeah. And they were actually at – a truck was actually at 24 5's quarters when the box came in for the job. So they were close by, but they did the right. second do, and these guys did the first do. And right. I talked to the Nazeman at that job. He said, Mike, I'm on my ground. The fire was uh, blowing up heads out of nowhere, and I'm hitting it. I'm not making a dent. The fire just blew up the stairs at the at the, the Watt Street fire. Right. Well, I knew those three guys. You know, it was like, it was like a, a bad time, you know, I guess. Uh, just I used things. to be able to remember every line of duty death from when I got on every year. I could, I could, unfortunately, I could rehearse the whole thing. And then all of a sudden, my brain is mush. I don't know what's going on. I can't remember uh, a freaking that's thing. That's called uh, old age. Welcome I've to heard of that. I, know, I don't know that. I've heard of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my, you know what they ask you? You, you never. You never had any uh, inspiration to go to soccer at all? You never had any... Uh... Well, back then, it wasn't soccer. We would take details to uh, Rescue 2. Like I said, oh, I, I wrote I, to Rescue yeah, 2. Right. But, oh, when I got... No uh, inspiration to go to Rescue 2? No, I, I, it, it's not... It's, this is going to sound like a knock, and it's not really a knock. There's nothing better than first do work. The guys in Rescue all have a ton of first do work, and they went to do more stuff. And I was just happy with my first do work. I got first do job. We're in there doing our thing. I'm not looking for headhunting, just... Teaching guys, right. and I enjoy teaching the guys. And and soccer is great. Believe me, I've got friends that worked in 157. Yeah, uh, Garden went to 111, but uh, this guy Mike Cunningham, Mikey Schweiger, they were rescue two guys. Mikey was lieutenant retired. So my guys that are on the world watching this as, as our time goes on, if you want to do more training, by all means, go to special units, learn that stuff. It's great, but you have to ice, you know, uh, perfect the basics. Right. You, know, you can't you can't do the special stuff till you've got the other stuff down to science. Then move on. And we need guys like that. Because it's certainly a nice thing to see rescue roll up to a job and say, okay, you know, they're the free safety team. They're going to fill in the voids we couldn't get or find something we didn't. Right, right. right. Those are experienced guys. I mean, I yeah. work up in a bunch with Mickey Convoy and guys like that. I mean, you know. Yeah. They're just, when they when they roll in, it's like, <clears> oh, <throat> you know, and they never stepped on my toes. They never had right, an issue. Right, right, right. I was just going to ask you, did you have a buck, uh, buck edge with uh, Rescue 2 when you were 157? Or no. No, because no. they were far enough away. Like, one time we worked, they went to a car accident back in 170. Four and one fifty seven were there. We pulled in like five, ten minutes later. It was like kind of over and done with. It was just a car under a truck type of deal. We just kind of hung around. But whenever you went to rescue as a detail, you had the roof. Right. So it was kind of easy. Like, all right. You got the roof tonight, kid. All right, no problem. I was the officer of rescue four one time though, which caused a little bit of a stir in headquarters. They they call up. I was covering officer, okay, go and rescue four tomorrow. Like, okay. I would rescue four. The officer there was this guy, Freddie Lafamina, ended up being a sock chief. It's a friend yeah, right. of mine. <laughs> now, who? Wait, who? wait, who? Have you heard him? The goat? Freddy, <laughs> Freddy, 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 because they rescue whatever you want to do. I said, Chief, we're up. You know, I got it. And we walk away. You know, I got my little blue number on. Like three days later, out in the audience come no officers out working a rescue. <laughs> <laughs> and another oh. thing, Vonnegut. <laughs> you, made a, you made a good impression, I see. You don't know shit about Kurt Vonnegut. That didn't take long. You fucked that whole thing. <laughs> my word. Whoops. My word. <laughs> my word. My word. But uh, yeah, so it, it was it was an interesting experience. But I enjoyed Sox. Sox good stuff. I mean, they, they're great stuff. Uh, the diving thing, how they do that. I watched a couple of their drills, how they do their uh, grid searches on that. It was like, wow, it's impressive. You know, oh, uh, Mike Amato was there too, right? I'm just looking at the list. Jimmy Amato you know, was one of them. Yeah, he was a great guy, man. <clears throat> oh, I he was a funny guy. guy. He's, he's calling me, hey, kid, come here for a second. Kid, come over and do this. So I'm, I'm on I'm there a couple of weeks. So I finally go, hey, Lou, let me ask you a question. Yeah, what do you want, kid? How old are you? <laughs> he was a year younger than me. You call me, kid? <laughs> Did he do this, though? Did he do this? Yeah, blinking. Oh, yeah, Jimmy. Yeah. yeah. Well, he oh, did it here. Nice that was the bug spray he was spraying on the side. That's yeah, that's right. You know what? That's right. 
he did he did my house i had to yeah, he, in whitestone he, he yeah. came and did the house the exterminator yeah, no, dude, guy, great. Guy. Was a lot of fun. we had, we had uh, uh dennis driscoll was there he's a one 113 guy he used to he's a basketball player and his dad was actually the captain of rescue five at one time but dennis was great played basketball he was a great officer cool guy we used to call him the black hole on the basketball court and he got the ball he never saw it again so it was <laughs> <laughs> But he, he, he was a great guy. I love Dennis. He was, he was, he was, he was, he was great. He was a good fire officer, you know, did his stuff. Everybody there was competent. They did their stuff. We had crazy guys working. This guy, Ron Dossie, was called Sheldon. You ever see the in laws, the old, the original in laws guys? I, I, I remember movie? that guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because the show, Turpentine Shelly, well, he was nuts. He would play stuff already at three o'clock in the morning. Like, just weird sound effects. So one night we're on, we have a fire and we have to, we're taking up. So I think it was 147's area was stuck against the building. So him and I was still on the roof. And we said, guys, can you get that thing down? Yeah, no problem. It's pouring rain, thunder and lightning. And here the two of us are shaking this aerial made of aluminum and thunderstorm. I'm like, what the hell are we doing? <laughs> Four he was, stories yeah, just, up. Yeah, that's just weird things. Good. And guys don't, that's not that funny. No, but if you were there, it was funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who was, who was the guy? There, and then you'll laugh. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Tell who was that. the guy you mentioned before? The fish. He was there a long time, right? Well, my king, yeah, he used to. We Well, what we had in some of the engine and truck Olympics, we started that back in the day. Engine truck, the hate was fabulous. You could salivate at the hate. It was so great. And we were eating and drinking all day. And it was like seven, eight, eight, ten events. So it was like a one pitch softball. And now she wanted guys in the trucks the first <clears> time. <throat> first guy up there was one pitch softball, Patty. Told the pitch. What does he do? He didn't like the pitch. What like, what are you doing? Just well, I didn't like it. It's one pitch, not one swing. You can hit. <laughs> Wrong man, kids, man. I house it. Couldn't figure out one pitch. Anyway, so we won the first year and stuff. Mm -hmm. Engine hated us, but it was a lot of that brought the house so close together. The Olympics, engine truck, best thing. If you guys out there have engine trucks, get an Olympics seven eight events. You will get so close. It was great eating and drinking. Fish used to own the sugar bowl in uh, Breezy Point. Was it? Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, 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 right. I remember yeah, that. a lot of fun out there and stuff. But uh, that was good. It was a good time. It was just, just a lot of great stuff. The guys were, were just fabulous guys to work with, and they were good. And they were kind to me once they realized, you know, that I'm not just a Manhattan guy. I go, you have 11 years in Manhattan. You know what that is in Brooklyn? That's about six months. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when I got when I got to 103, I was in. Uh, I, I walk in and there's uh, Freddie Gallagher. He's uh, the senior senior man in the truck, right? So uh, he says, "Hey, Lou." Uh, how you doing? Where, where'd you work? So I says, oh, I was in 117 and I was in uh, Squad 28. He says, oh, good. So you haven't been to any fires. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I was hoping you'd show me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I had the same thing, yeah. Doesn't matter. You're here now. I'm like, okay. You know. Well, you, you know what? That's what makes the houses so much fun. Like, guys out, you go to different places. It's, it's, it's the same circus, different clowns, and you're going to be attacked. So if you don't have thick skin, go where is it? This is part of it. Bucketing guys, which we can't do anymore. Oh, yeah. that, I got it. If you're doing it to really like punish the guy because he's not learning and becomes right. like harassment, not a learning tool. <clears throat> I kind of got that. I understand that reality. But for the most part, bucketing, you what you do when you walk in the door? You look up. Right. I know, I'm yeah. always looking up. Oh, when you're leaving. Oh, when you're leaving. <laughs> uh, I thrown at me one time. Yeah, you know, they don't they didn't see the guys in care. But that was a learning tool. You know, and they take away these things. And some of those things, while there's a reason, there's still a reason to keep it. I think anyway. I, I agree. Yeah. I think it so brings you close. I think it's part of uh, if they're doing it, if they're breaking your balls, it's because they like it. You know what I mean? It's yeah. A lot of times is when they're not breaking your balls. That's when you have to worry. Oh, boy. You know? Yeah. Yeah. What about uh, the basement over there? Any good basement stories over there? They do that over there? <laughs> oh, yeah. We had a good basement. The captain cut the wire one time to a little little device that we had that was keeping things cold. We just spliced <laughs> it back together again, went out of hell with it, and walked away. Yeah, we had the gym down. I went this guy, Mike Cunningham, who's a lieutenant in rescue. He would work out at 3 o'clock in the morning. He had these noises. He had weights. Yeah, he was a beast. Nicest guy in the world. Gentle, kind man, but just like a monster. He was a karate expert or some kind. But he was one of the nicest guys you ever want to meet. Oh uh, yeah, we had we'd have company meetings down in the basement, a little, you know, a little relaxing times down there. A lot of fun. The basement was the nicest part of the fire. Oh, I thought some some basements are swing town, right? Roof like one seventeen. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You'll uh, you go down there and only one comes up. Two go down, oh. one come up. Hello. Um, there's some car games going on down there and stuff like that. Yeah, I was well, the thing there. Now I'm Italian, if you didn't know. No, for those of you on yep. the video world. I can... <clears throat> I can tell. You couldn't tell with the hands. Yeah, it's a thing. I go home and get thing. your fucking. They would shot call a thing called a meeting. We're having a meeting Friday night, which meant the boys were going out drinking, 
And if you called the meeting, you had to be the last person to leave. So I have a free weekend. No one's home. Say, hey, I'm calling a meeting. So the guy's like, well, I don't know. Can You never call one before. I said, well, you know, I'm free now. So they had to go to this guy, Eddie Mullins. He's a captain in Queens, just retired. Yeah, you used to clean the beer taps on the side. Great guy. I might, right up. Uh, he goes, hey, listen, Eddie, can Scott o call a meeting? He goes, he's alone. He can't call anything. You can stay, but you can't call the meeting. It was the arrows in the loop. So, like, so I stayed till the end, but I couldn't call the meeting. They have rules. What what, is, what do you mean? You could, Why couldn't you call the meeting? Because I wasn't Irish. I was Italian. I couldn't call oh. the meeting. <laughs> yeah, we, we got a guy. Uh, rules. I didn't know that. Somebody said so about the loons. We, yeah, we, guys, we yeah, loon, loon hour is blue collar worker in the chat is saying loon hour and he's also saying bubble arms i don't know what that means <laughs> bubble arms. that might have been mikey cunningham because he was a big kid oh yeah all right <laughs> oh yeah he was he was he was, a beat. Than bubble head. he was like about five foot nine five yeah. foot eight he wasn't like six but he was just he put his own yeah. i put my arms on one time now i was younger and stronger he said try and hold me i said i got you you ain't getting free he went like this yeah <laughs> It's like uh, so much straight paper holding. I'm like, okay, never mind. Well, balloon yeah. arm is better than Lieutenant Blabby. Oh, oh hey. <laughs> now you guys can drink. Mike, I don't know if I, I said this story before. I, I was covering that you guys had um, ah. a uh, a boys' night out or something. I don't know if it was Metal Day or something, and all in the whole <laughs> firehouse showed up, and they and you guys all went out, and I was, you know, we we all had uh, covering guys there, you know. So you guys, of course, came back. I was up in the office and it was like, I don't know, one, two o'clock and everybody was shooting and hollering and having fun and everything. <clears throat> so all of a sudden I hear boom, like some ridiculously loud explosion. <laughs> right. And I'm like, what the no. F? I'm like, I have to go down there and see what the hell's going on. And I come downstairs and in the kitchen, they had put like one of those like huge, huge cans of, uh, What's the uh, pork and beans mm -hmm. on the stove? <laughs> like, just put it on the stove and oh, turn it on, God. but sealed. <laughs> never heard of that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't remember that one. The can I was on the I never heard floor. of that, bro. Yeah, it was pork and beans. Like, it exploded. Like, it was everywhere. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, and one and what did I do? What do you think I did? What did I do? I turned around and went right back. I don't know. 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 I don't or something. There's cake. There's food everywhere. In walks the captain. Allegedly. Uh, no, well, allegedly. No, this is like a make believe story. Walks no, and gets his coffee. I said, "Morning, captain." He goes, "Hey, don't walk right back out." Didn't say a word. We cleaned up. It was we like that. But it was like there's a blue suit. So I learned that way. Because when you're an officer, guys out in the, in the world, I got walk into the kitchen in '58, right? Because that's where I was there, officer. And I know what's going on. You don't want to know. Put my hand up. <laughs> make a bat turn and get out of the kitchen because they're saving me by not telling me. So right. officers, when the guys do that, they're saving make your life. Make good decisions. I'll see make, you later. Yeah. Mark, see you later. I gotta go. <laughs> I left something on the stove upstairs. I'm out of here. Uh, my wife's taking a bath in the sink. I gotta go. Whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. That's All right. So let's, let's push forward to '97. You study. You get promoted lieutenant. I didn't and study. I cheated. I cheated. That works. All right, you got it. You got promoted in '97. And what'd you do? Bounce for a while because you didn't get. Yeah, I bounced about two years in the seventh division up there. I was assigned to the uh, two seven battalion, which is up in uh, thirty seven and uh, truck and seventy nine engine. Um, I was up there for a while. I was covering, and then the prince, Captain Principio, Captain my Captain, he saw me. He saw how, how the guys mm -hmm. like because the guys really determine who the officers are to some degree. Like they like you, they trust you, they have confidence in you, out of fire, how you are, how you handle yourself. And that's kind of what he liked. Now, he's a Bronx guy. He's never worked more than five miles in any distance. That's as far in the, in the city. From 58. <laughs> yeah. You, you, take, you take a quarter, draw a circle on a map, that's where he worked. He never worked there. <clears throat> so he took me as a Brooklyn guy. His buddy Kenny Durant is a Brooklyn guy. Patty Sell was a Brooklyn guy. Jimmy McMahon was a Brooklyn guy. The only guy who came out of the, the sixth borough was Jimmy Scarcus. Now, the sixth borough, for those of you watching this, is Harlem. Yes, it's in the island of Manhattan, but it's not a Manhattan company. Uh -huh. you, work in Walm, you don't work in Manhattan. Cops yeah, are the same Manhattan. way, apparently. Right? Yeah. Always you work in Manhattan, not working home. When, when you work in Manhattan, Manhattan. Uh, no. I work in Manhattan. Okay. I work in Hall. Yeah. I work in Hall. No, ask any home fire. I, I know a bunch of guys. This guy uh, just retired, Tom Cosgrove. He's an instructor up here with us in the state. He's out of Rescue One, but he was a 28 truck guy. Where do you work? Hall. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's so true, man. You know, if you, if you worked out, 
you know, Midtown, you go, I work in Manhattan. But if you work in oh, Harlem, you don't work in that? Manhattan, bro. I work in Harlem. Oh. <laughs> Harlem. Harlem. Oh, wow. What the hell is that? It's in Manhattan. No, it's not. But, uh, yeah, so I bounced for a couple of years, covered there. You know, whatever. I you know, worked other boroughs, and I send you where they need you, obviously. And then I, I landed in uh, 58 and 2000 because the guys liked me. Uh, which questions their ability to think on their feet. But anyway, <laughs> I stayed there. Yeah, yeah. I was like, what, what are you guys thinking? But they didn't realize how much I talked because as a covering officer, you pretty much keep your mouth shut because you don't know anybody. Right. Then I got into the groove. I was in. Oh, forget it. I was over there. I was that's blabbing. When you became, uh, that's when you became Lieutenant Blabby. Oh, hey! Exactly. <laughs> oh, I hit all three buttons at once. Sorry about that. What the fuck? I was actually called. I was actually one bell for a while because I worked. I covered in the engine. They had thing called training spots, but it was assigned an officer to a uh, open spot for six months to give you how it was to be an officer. Because you're there to a vacation, a couple of days, a week. You don't get to know the operations of the uh, of the uh, company. So what they did for a short time was assign you to an open spot for six months. So you got to learn the company operations. You know, you were there for six whole months. So I was in the engine. That's how they kind of got to know me. I was in 45 engine. And uh, KGB, who was the captain, not Putin, uh, is Kevin Burke. Was like, his, his initials were KGB, so we called him KGB. The Russian guy comes to us, who is your captain here? But, uh, <laughs> I must break you. I must, I must break you now. Making pig dog. Anyway, yeah, that's why he did the national anthem. I thought you like the Iraq national anthem. You know, why be a front runner? Peace <laughs> I don't be giving no fuck shit. Don't be giving fuck shit. <laughs> you know what we say here in Russia is tough shitsky. You don't get the spot. <laughs> <laughs> so we we uh, so Kevin was the captain, and he like he offered me a spot in the engine, but I I didn't want. I wanted to work for a truck. I was kind of happy with that. His son actually uh, Ryan Burke works in the uh, truck now. He's a uh, he came from the engine to the truck. Mm. He made a grab a couple, couple, uh, two years back. He pulled a kid out of a, a man out of a building, which was a uh, bomber fire. It was nice. very good. Yeah, it's good to see that you know that, that his dad was on a job, he's on a job. You know, we all do that. It seems mm. to be the way it is uh, throughout the country. From what I've seen, different places I've taught and visited and what have you, you tend to see that kind of like circle. Like, yeah, you know, I want to be like my dad. I want to, which speaks a lot about your dads. You know, I mean, if you want to be like them, that's okay. a pretty cool thing. Uh, anyway, so I got there and. Um, in 2000, and uh, I, I was there ever since. And then I, I failed a couple of captain's tests. Yeah, my, my invisible link ran out, and I couldn't cheat. So oh, I, I, son <laughs> of a bitch. He was there. He was there. And you guys spent 20-something years together. There. 21 years together, yeah. Holy shit, man. That's yeah, wild. which was, that's why they had a WNYF article uh, last spring in, in 2021. Like, you know, uh, this this woman, Patty Murphy, she used to do the thing for the... Uh, Go that one, Pete. WIF article, Pete. Yeah. The bathing, the bathing we were in it. It was three, four, three or four pages. Oh, it was yeah. nice. I said, wow, I didn't expect this kind of coverage. Me? You know, I'm just a guy. You know, I'm a regular guy. But it was... it was. Oh, yeah, it is, friends. We're making the most of our retirement. Yes, community pools that offer senior discounts. We're in that. are all tanned up, ready to go. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, we were ready. Must have been cold water. Yeah, well, it was, yeah. <laughs> when, I die, when I die, you see this picture. When I die, I'm going to donate my body to science fiction. That's what I'm going to do with <laughs> A lot, of, a lot of Bruce Lee's there, Lou. Hard nips. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my God. Uh, and the Cougars. You know, there's a lot of Cougars out there. Once their batteries die, we catch them. They, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the, the Get Yourself the Experience are, podcast was brought to you formally <laughs> on YouTube. No uh, more. No more. 21 years. I think that's – I say that all the time, Mike. That's the best for the firehouse is when officers stay there a long time and, and, and they're liked and – I, I think that's the best part is when there's consistency in the offices there for a long time. Well, it was great when Timmy mentioned that a few weeks back when he was on the show. He said, you know, I worked, you know, Prince Sylvia was working, Scott, or Donlin, McKee. All those guys, uh, uh, Joe Murphy, he had 33 years on the job. So it was 33 or 31. I just wrote it down. I probably 33 years. And he retired a while because he got, his lungs were bad. He got caught, you know, his lungs finally went bad. You know, when Timmy's working, you have all these guys working up around you with so much time on the job and good shops. You're so confident. You're so comfortable. Yeah, you show up to a job yeah. and you see them there and you feel, you know, oh, there's nothing you can't We had a job. Have. I have to tell this because Timmy told me before the show, he called me up and said, Mike, you better mention because I forgot to. I said, yeah, no problem, Tim. Because he tells me what to do and I just do it because I'm afraid of him. <laughs> was so an was guy. Guy. With him and Timmy Clutch. The short guys, they run under your legs and hit you, you know. Anyway. What do you got? What do you got? An ice machine next to you? What do you got? 
What's going on over there, bro? You got the quick check thing with ice in it. Uh, oh, <laughs> now you know what? Oh, look at that. Now he figured out, Kev Finn finally figured out what it sounds like all night long. Look go. at that. There yeah, you but go. I'm, not, I'm not crying like a bitch about it, though. That's it. Oh, oh, wow. wow. Marron. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Luke. Go ahead. What? No, that's good. That's okay. <laughs> so we get the job. 38 truck had a covering show, and they got lost. And we pointed and said, Where's the truck? They're lost. Okay, we're first due. Timmy's at the door inside the vestibule. I said, Timmy, is this the apartment door? He goes, no, it's the vestibule. I'm like, what? I opened the door. The smoke was black as night. I thought it was the door of the apartment. Oof. I said, that's the vestibule. He goes, I just told you it was the vestibule. <laughs> we had like two rooms going in the rear. We went in. We found it. Uh, my buddy, this guy, Jason Brothers, actually got burned on his face. And then we, Timmy, it's in the back. It's coming towards us. It was coming down the hallway. We backed out. They went in. They put the fire out. And it was that kind of confidence. He said, Timmy's working at 88. Um, it, the fire's going out. My mutual partner for many years, this guy Paul McKee, was in, it was an 82 engine, 31 truck. And then he came to 45 and then came across to 40 58. Very, he's like, he's a nomad. He just moves his stuff around. Mm. Uh, when he was in the engine, they got a unit citation for putting on a fire one time. Uh, it was a hell of a job. They got engines don't generally get unit citations, but it was that kind of a job that they just did such a great job. They had to get a unit, you know? And uh, you like to see that when guys get credit yeah. for their work. You know, you're quick to knock them down as well. Hey, guys, what are you thinking? Sometimes some people act that way. If you're going to be quick with the con condemnations or the corrections, you should be just as quick with the, with the uh, you know, the praise. Yeah, yeah, the accolades. Yeah, that's a great job. You know, hey, so we should, you know, you need yeah. that. But um, hey, let me ask it, you both of you something as lieutenants. Uh, oh, look at there that. There he guys. is. Oh, oh, Timothy. Yeah, hold on. Timothy there you go. Aww. There's Jim. There's the clitoris. Where was the clitoris part? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I never saw it. <laughs> he kept it well, in. That would have been still. scary maybe to see. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> was it, was it, it wasn't clean though. I was some, some kind of growth on it. I don't know. <laughs> nice. All right. So here's the question. When you when you come in for a night tour, would you look at to see what, what the other offices were in the other company? So you know yeah. what you, you were Oh, going? yeah. Knows, yeah. working, knows. Yeah, all right. Yeah, Lou. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would always do that. Especially 130. If, if I was in 288, I would definitely look to see who was in 136 and Rescue Four. You know, the, you know those types of companies right away. Right. Yeah, you want to know who's working with you because if it's a carbon guy and you don't know him, uh, what's his name? Right. You know, it's this, who's this guy? Bob. Okay. Uh, those things and who the crew was, because like you know, you want to know who's working, and it's just a comfort feeling. Like they had a covering show for that day uh, for that job that we talked about, and he got mm -hmm. lost. You know, I didn't know it was a coming show, but I knew who the officer was. But so we got in. They came in right behind us. They went upstairs above. And it was just a one apartment going and stuff like that. But that was a big thing. Had I realized that, I wouldn't have thought they'd get lost. But it's something I think as a covering show, but he might not be as good getting out the door, making the turns. He's a little unsure of himself. So those things add to your time frame. You know, right. so if you have a show that knows the area, you know, drive it in, your dispatch is just be like that, right? They will tell you, you got this, you're going to work, you have this. Yeah, right. You know, Oh yeah, they knew everything. And all the, the old time dispatchers. We had a guy, Gene Sawicki. He's a priest from Father Gene. He was the only working priest in America. He was on the cover of Daily News sometime back in the day, you know. And uh, he would he would call us up at night, you know. We get the three rings back in eighteen inch, and ding ding ding, they'd ring the phone. You're going to work, okay? From the amount of calls. And, and then all of a sudden, the beep boop would go off, right? You have it before. The, yeah, the... Warren, they used to say Warren Fuchs would always give us the deal. Warren's call. He's not calling us up. We got out the door in a hurry, like you said, out the door, 90 miles an hour. Yeah. Well, Pritchett's order was one guy says, you guys, you know, you should, because if we beat you in, it's your fault. Yeah. Like I said, it's your fault. We shouldn't beat you in your first new box. Other than like you're in another box. Or whatever. If you're out of quarters, you're supposed to beat us in. How are we yeah. beating you in? And he actually did something great that I didn't mention. I go back. I know time is getting short. No, it doesn't matter. Right. Do we, had, we had three radios back then. The, uh, the engine got three radios before everyone had four radios. He gave the, the second or third radio to the nozzleman. And the reason was, he goes, because he'd run in the building. He goes, I could tell you where to bring the line. He goes, I don't need my chauffeur and my control man, the guys hooking up outside the street who are 30, 40 feet apart to have two radios. I don't huh. need that. I can tell one guy with a radio. And we're like, you know what? It was in, it was in the, the regulations. The officer can decide where the third radio goes. So he was following procedures. But he did it. And guys were like, what are you doing a nozzleman for? He says, so I could tell him where to bring the line. We're like, you know what? That's not a bad idea. So he would do, he was an inventive guy. And, you know, beside being a great firefighter uh, and, and just a lot of fun around the firehouse. Yeah, thinking um, outside the box, man. Yeah. You know, this is a good idea because he would run. He knew where the hell he went. Like, where the hell was Jack? Yeah, and then he would have to come back and get you if, if. Yeah. Well, he one time was running. Going back to Brooklyn real quick. Go back to Fidia in a second. 
The engine turns ahead of us. We're going to block these buildings called the Vanderveers. They've gotten better now in Brooklyn. They used to be really bad. In fact, they were so bad that one of the buildings hired Farrakhan's Muslims to protect the building from the crime. They got fired in about six, seven months because they were beating up everybody. But anyway, it was a really bad area. Yes. So the engine goes, and we're behind like half a block. We turn. The engine's right there. Like, what are they doing? The entrance is around the other corner. Then the engine takes off as we come. We go, what the hell? We look at the building. The fire escape ladder's on. Some white smoke. Oh, Jack's climbing the fire escape by himself going in the, in the window. He gets in. We're like, you mother. Like, <laughs> is cold. like son of a <laughs> That's what he would do. Like, crazy stuff. He just... Mm-hmm. And you know, like that. Like, remember Patty Brown? You probably heard his yep. name mentioned a couple yeah, of yeah, thousand of times. No matter where he went, he found fire. If he was walking down the street with his kids in a stroll, there'd be a fire across the street. Yeah, yeah, I could light the fire across the street. It wouldn't wait. Like, <laughs> <laughs> then it would come out, and Patty would get it. Yeah, <laughs> and make a grab. <laughs> make a grab. You know, we worked with him in three trucks, so I knew from three trucks. Yeah, another, another day. But uh, yeah, Fifty Eight was is is a is, is a great place. A lot of young guys, full of uh, piss and vinegar. They want to go to work. Yeah. Hey, Pete, we were talking about priests. I think you have something there, like a, a, a shot with a priest, don't you? Oh, I got somebody. Yeah, oh, yeah. Look at this guy. Right here. Not just any priests. Whoa. Yeah. His holiness, oh, yeah. the Dalai Lama. <laughs> Every time he touched me, I yelled, it burns. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what well, the hell he happened here? Yes, on Southern Boulevard. At, there's a Spanish church over there. So, uh that's me without my uniform shirt on. The captain pointed that out. We were at a run. We were doing something at the firehouse, doing the drill, and we had a run. Tommy Brick, uh, one of the nicest, most enthusiastic firefighters you ever want to meet. Knowledge was ending. Cheap Moscow, who just retired. Uh, I don't know who that guy is in the white. It's Matty, Matty Willock and his Acucho. He just got three quarters. He got quarter with a, with a smoke grenade. Him and another guy, this guy, Sven Jensen, got put out. The oh, prince shit. was working, and he, he stayed on. He didn't get, as long as he didn't get bad. We weren't shocked. And then Dylan, yeah. and then the guy <laughs> on the right is Paul Ronaldson, Al Ronaldson's son. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, 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 His yeah. other son, Al, was in Rescue 3. Rescue 3. He was in right. 59 Truck in there. But that's uh, aggressive guys, young, strong guys, uh, just into the job, into yeah. going to fires. You know, hmm. you, you could you could, you could could sift 10,000. You wouldn't get, you know, better guys than I've got work with in my career. And uh, yeah, that's me. That's me without a hat on. I mean, guys, thank God he's wearing a hat. <laughs> <laughs> the light officer said we'd be blinding out the screen. Oh, look. Your garden was very nice. He was, a, he was very gracious. He's got a six foot hook in his hand. He's ready for action. Well, he wants to go. <laughs> he was in court. He was in <laughs> so you shake his hand. You know, he's no, he's no, he's no sissy Mary. You squeeze your hand like, holy crap. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, easy. Oh, he was, who, what, what who, nice is, who is the chief there, Mike? Uh, Mosca. Vinny Mosca. He came out of uh, Brooklyn. He was uh, the battalion commander at the time. He got out three quarters a couple years back. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, but uh, then now uh, Mike Train is the uh, battalion commander 18th. I know guys watching this going, we don't know these people, but some people do. But you know what? We've always had good chiefs. We had Sorko was in the 18th. He yeah. was a battalion commander for us. So I worked with him for years. And uh, he just looked down the hall and yelled. And I would look down because his office was down the end. I said, Chief, I want to put a fireplace in the office so you can see a fireplace. He goes, I like that. And then the prince comes in just saying, a fucking ski lodge. Did I get this fireplace? <laughs> oh, no fireplace. The captain shot me down again. <laughs> and that rumor mm-hmm. about not doing paperwork. Yeah, I, I saw that. The paperwork there. I, you know, I, Paul, actually, no, Paul McKee didn't post it. He was, he's, a, he's a great guy. <laughs> Peter, there was some old school pictures. There was one old school picture of 58 there. With uh-huh. a vacant. I, got oh, it. Yeah. I got it. It's freaking awesome. This is probably my <clears> favorite one. In the 70s. Yeah, no, I got it. Stand by. Uh, I've seen that picture before. I don't know who took that picture. <clears throat> Hold on. We, oh, here yeah, it is. I don't know. I just saw it. Yeah, yeah. Someone sent it to me and I took it off the website. This is amazing. That's great. Yeah. We got this. But if you listen to your radio transmissions back in the day, they'd say, we have a fire. Go, yeah, we have no engines available. Right, first, when you're done at the fire rack, go down the block and put out the other fire. Yeah, that was no pain. So that looks like the same type of scenario. Like just, you know, when you, when you can't put it out. I don't wow. know what they did there. And that's why the Bronx looked like the Bronx at the end of the 70s, man. It looked like a war zone. And look at his Bronx. He almost has a Bronx, Ben. Not quite, but not quite. Well, when we were in program school, you could ask your brother. We went, they took us to the Bronx to cut roofs on all the vacant buildings. So we went there, the job took us in Boston. We would cut practice using the saws, you know, which were new. I didn't try, right. I sent the picture of my my original saw, partner saw, your chainsaw rather, but I didn't see it on the thing. I didn't, didn't make it the cut. But uh, it was an interesting photo. But yeah, we used the axes and stuff. Um, What's that other picture, Peter, right there below but, that? Below this? <clears throat> yeah, uh, you still, know, it's a couple years ago, just another conflagration. Ruffy, I asked him what that is on the uh, on the 
end of the tower ladder there. That's uh, Vice guys. Because they were in on what Vice Street? Vice, Vice Avenue, yeah, between Vice them. Avenue. Oh, Vice and Dale, we still go with the Vice guys. The Actually, Vice the guy guys. with the hood to the left, he's the guy who took some picture of me sitting in the chair. Wow. Uh, yeah, well, was that the same job? <clears throat> no, 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 a different job. No, this was a a, a, a junkyard going. Yeah. Uh, you guys, you guys, say, uh, okay. you guys saved the foundation on this one? Was that? I don't think so. It was outside. It was outside. No, it looks spectacular. No, it was outside. It was outside. It was outside. It was outside. Nobody wants to go to those fires. No. That thing looks horrible. Bloody and wet. I like and this one. Yeah, mm. that's a great picture too. That's what a great shot. Well, that water is from the runoff from the towel. I just put yeah, that the yeah. fire behind oh, it. That was out. Well, he put the chair there. I said, Mike, why don't you go sit by the command post? I said, What are you out of your mind? I posted that picture up of you, and like twenty <laughs> guys commented, like, make sure that's not the one Louie had with the bed bugs that he. <laughs> <laughs> It probably that was. was when I came home that night, come to think of it. Yeah, that was like a fourth alarm in Jerome Avenue a couple, like two years or so. It was, it was just a, a whole nest. And we just threw 10,000 gallons of water on it every like minute yeah, for a couple yeah, hours. Wow. LT, you're fresh off the job. Like, uh, here's here's the more of that same fire, but you're fresh That's off the my, job. Like, uh, I guess tempo. you haven't had time to have the perspective yet. But, if but you know, what do you think you're going to wind up missing the most now, now that you're fresh off? Today, right? What do you miss the most already? Oh, the guys. Yeah, I miss the guys uh, hanging with them. Going, to, I mean, they don't miss me clearly, but but uh, <laughs> you know, I miss going to. They're like, thank God, I'm here again. Oh, what? Uh, 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 what is their voices? Scotto, Amazing. Scotto, Scotto, no, right, who? No. Yeah, who was that guy? Yeah. I was just years. back there for the first time in a couple of months because, like I said, I was sick and stuff, and it, it, was, it was hugs and kisses, basically, you know. Oh, um, yeah, I miss the guys. I mean, I enjoy training. I, I love to train with the guys. Um, the guy, the third guy in that picture is this guy, Bobby Stoltis. He's out of Boston Spa up north. And uh, we actually teach with them. They, they had a guy on the left next to the side of, of Mike. We actually do free training up there. A couple of us do, uh, you know, one day with Boston Spa. It's called Mick Boston. And we do training with them. As you know, they, they put us up in a hotel room. They feed us lunch and hopefully some beer. And we do some training. And it's a great day out. Uh, he's heavy into the job. Uh, he used to hang out in 45 truck. That's how we got to know Mike years ago. Oh, all right. he's, he's, a, he's a major bum. Good kid though, but he's he's good. He wants to know he's he's uh, knowledgeable. Yeah, he's the kind of kid you want working. You know, like, you got guys too. Eric yeah. Tech Meyer, who's a legacy. Mm -hmm. You got the Ronaldson kid. You got so many other guys, and I miss that about them teaching him because I went in and there was a female firefighter. She's detailed on the one year detail from Queens to uh, fifty eight for the year, and I'm saying you no, know, I can't teach her anything because I can't start training because there were offices there and I'm not there anymore, mm -hmm. and I miss that a lot. No but you, but you, tra you do training outside of, you know, obviously the FDNY, right? So that's yeah, like yeah. a good way yeah. to keep you connected to the community anyway? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I'm a New York State instructor I, I, on the resume. I say, you know, I teach for the state. So I teach all the volleys up here. I got you. And an Orange County instructor. So we teach them. But I also teach outside. I have a little company. It's called Legacy Firefighting. And we train where we can. We've been training down in Delaware for many years on in Vermont, up in uh, Burlington, Vermont. My friend, this guy, Mike Curtin, is a captain up there. And we just did a horde class together. It was online because we couldn't do it in person because of the war. Right, right, right. But uh, the kids down in Delaware, I've been teaching in Little Creek, uh, this kid, Reed Bundick, him, his brother. Now, that Reed is only 17 and uh, Bryce is, I think, 15. His dad's the chief and their far grandfather was the chief. They butt up against the Air Force Base in Dover. Well, they had a job a couple weeks back, like a legit, like really ass kicking job. Reed went in the second floor window, got in there, heavy smoke, heavy fire, closed the door. And he says, he goes, you're right. oh, because he calls me Scott. He goes, everything got a little better. I was able to search. He got a nine-year-old kid out, he handed wow. him out the window wow. to someone. The, the girl ended up passing away, but he did everything right. Went back in with another guy and they found the second person uh, who I think survived, but they just helped find him, get him out. But he's 17 years old. I was going to say, 17 years old. 17. So he's been going up in the fire service like we all have done to some degree. And he went in there under under extreme conditions and did what anyone else would have done. Closing the door is a uh, yeah. freaking hard. And he run, said man. he learned that. He goes, well, you guys told me, shut the door. I said, right, close the door. Yeah, I saw right. yourself in a room. You buy yeah, yourself Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it worked out well. I said, well, I'm not, I didn't make this stuff up. I'm just yeah. passing on the knowledge. Right, right, right. Like whatever I teach, and I'm sure, you know, Lou, you've done that, similar things. Yeah. Everyone does something similar. I call the fire service a relay race. And the baton of knowledge, the baton of what I hand that up to the next guy, and he hands that to the next guy, and the next guy, and the next guy. You just keep going around and around, and expending that knowledge around, and that's what you want. You want that knowledge. 
because I didn't invent this stuff. Like there was yeah, right. ladder. No one knows what that is. But I didn't invent it. I'm just saying, hey, this is what you do. When I cut a roof, I sat on a roof in Brooklyn one time. I was four, three and a half stories up, chopping a hole with an axe. Guys all giggled at me. I said, well, what did we do before we had saws? We yeah. used an axe. So I couldn't use a saw from sitting on a peak roof. I had to use an axe. So the old stuff works. Yeah. You know, and you don't want to forget that stuff in lieu of technology. But technology is good also. Obviously, they, yeah. they each have their place in the world. So, you know. Um, They're saying that in the chat that uh, <clears> they've heard <throat> that the the Mac through Mac Boston, that they've said that the training is effing amazing. Yeah, I'm not the only guy. There's a couple other guys that, that work on it. And we all work together with the guys from Mac Boston. We all take a different station, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, forcible entry, uh, oh. search and rescue, stuff like that. And we just we just, just sharing the knowledge with other guys. And they yeah. share knowledge with us. Whenever I teach, even at the state level, because it's right here in Orange County, right? It's only like 15 minutes from my house in New York. Um, I hear something I never heard before from a guy. I, said, I never thought about that. Like we were doing the guy, Mike Curtin up in Vermont says, you know, the thermal imaging camera is great when you have an outside house. When you look at the house, you can check where the windows, where the heat is. I said, you know what? I never really thought about that. Because hmm. usually you're running in mentality. You get to the yeah. inside. And so <clears throat> if you take a real quick survey with the camera on the outside of the building, you can see what windows have heat in it. And that can right. tell you what room has fire, what room might not have fire. Mm. It's just another tool to use in right. a different way. But I really yeah. never did that. You could also <laughs> use them for manhole covers. If you're looking for a burnout, you see which manhole covers are hot. And yeah, you don't exactly. Rig over it. Yeah. Right. So there's so many guys out there with information. And when we teach, or when I teach, and other guys, I'm sure, I'm gaining knowledge. And then I'm sharing it with someone else. I'm not keeping it. This is my knowledge. I'm keeping it. I give it out to everybody. Because if it saves a life or makes their job easier, yeah. Like, 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 like Reed did. He closed that door. And that came from us teaching him and his dad and other guys there in Little Creek, obviously. It wasn't just us, but we put the – and it made a difference. It got so much better. Right. Yeah. Close the flow pad, 17 man. years old, and he knows to close the door. <clears throat> yeah. Amazing. Which was, I thought was huge. Yeah. Yeah. Thought yeah. If, was that, huge. if that was Pete, he'd be closing the door. He'd be at the end of the block, his front oh. door to the house, but he'd <laughs> yeah. be closing yeah. the door. Oh, he's gone. gone. You'd see, I'd car. see, listen, I've seen a lot of fire in my time. It's unfortunately, it's Down coming off my heels, running from everything <laughs> that's hot. Actually, I had a quick question before we get to. I got to say like, one favorite, though. You know, that training company, I know a really great podcast that would be a great vehicle to advertise that we'll oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 that'd be great yeah. right? that'd be awesome you know uh mike i gotta ask you this so yes, there's a lot of salty guys out there guys who get down the road they seem a little uh jaded they seem a little like tired you know whatever right but you seem like this is you 24 7 you seem like a very chill guy am i am i incorrect in that assessment but if that's the case though how do you stay like this? So positive. You're pretty laid back about it. You know, like you seem like a really, really approachable and easygoing kind of guy. Is that the case? Yeah. I, you could, you could ask the guys or any text you might have gotten. This is, this is me. I am this way all the time. I, I love the fire service. I always wanted to be a fireman, you know, a firefighter. Whatever. And I just love it. And I didn't really teach a lot when I was younger. Once I, but after 9-11 happened, I kind of got to say, you know, we need to know more. Something just turned me and said, you know, we got to, and teaching became a thing. I started doing more training on the outside, more training in the firehouse. Again, we trained in 57. And then when I got to 58, we were training because yeah. I was a new lieutenant learning. But it's the love of the guys and the love of the job. I mean, yeah. you, know, you know what? You know what? Like to be a firefighter, you have to remember what the mother said to the son one time. The son looks up at the mother and says, Mom, I want to be a fireman when I grow up. The mother looks down in his eyes with the sweetest look in the world and says, Son, you can't do both. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you can grow up. Or you can be, we, we, yeah. had, we have a camping trip at the firehouse. And one of the guys wasn't bringing his bug spray for his kids. So just because he wasn't, we always share. We didn't care. Like, you know, he never brings bug spray. So we decided to give him his own bug spray one night around the campfire around midnight. We're, you know, having a few uh, few uh, glasses of lemonade. Mm -hmm. And he sprayed himself with the pump spray. And the mosquitoes are landing on him like an aircraft carrier. Like, yeah, you got to put some more bug spray on me. Never really bad. Like, yeah, they're killing me. Now we're starting to glaze in the heat from the fire. <laughs> it was iced tea in the pump spray. <laughs> <laughs> the brothers. The brothers. Of we have course. a father's. Yeah, our camping trip is the best. It's it's another thing that you know, it's a father's kids camping trip, which means no adult supervision. Yeah, we did that in 103 for years, Mike. I was going to say, you guys Land, Landers. Landers. It's probably the same spot, Landers, we used well, to go to. We go to Lake Keene. We're doing oh, now right. 17 years. This will be our 17th yeah. or 18th year coming up. It's 
things like this, guys, that you're watching the show, that brings you together. It's closer. We're laughing. We're fooling around. We're taking care of each other's kids for a while. You know what? We're, we're, we're just being regular people, having a lot of fun. And that fun you bring back to the firehouse, because that story I told you is a true story. You bring it back to the firehouse, guys, that, well, they go, oh my God. we got to go to one of these There's so much fun. Right. Bring some kids, man. I'll wrench some of mine. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I'm reasonable. Yeah. The kids love that. I mean, going with that, because then the guys didn't even, you know, the kids got to do what they want. They were playing with fireworks. They went down on the on the refs, uh, and they, they fished and did all sorts of stuff together, guys. You know, it was like you said, it was easy peasy, and uh, it was a lot of fun. I did that for you. My kids look forward to that for years and years and years. Yeah. Nice. Now my daughter uh, is uh, my my, one of my, well, my my oldest daughter. My other is twenty three, and she has a child who's now five. Um, she can't go on a camping trip for the last five years. And she goes, "Why not, Dad?" I said, "Cause you're a mom. No mom's allowed." <laughs> no but mom's I've been allowed. there. Mad. That's the rule. The loons can't call a, a night out or a meeting. You can't go to camping. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's rules that we all gotta follow, I man. You know? rules. I don't know. I don't, I, don't, rules. I don't make the rules. We just follow them. That's, That's it. it. That's it. I get to sleep at home at night because I follow the rules. <laughs> what are the rules? I don't know. I, got, I get to sleep at night. You don't follow oh, I know. I know. Oh, I don't follow the rules. Yeah. Well, uh oh, here it comes. Bird so I had home. to ask him uh, a little bird. He had uh, told us that you had had right before you retired. I guess this is, uh, I guess you could explain this. Two last tour parties. Is that a possibility? Like, yeah, I had an electrical you? problem in my heart. And uh, they did an ablation and fixed it. There's my that's my first night back, first day back after my first last night. So I thought I would. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so shit. they came back, and there's my buddy Nick. And uh, so hold on, Nick let me just get this straight. Your last night, everybody showed up. <clears throat> yeah, well, guys, come yeah, companies came. I oh, rescued no, okay. I gave a little I mean, speech. A the whole nine yards. Oh yeah. <laughs> You guys have been great. It was just yeah. in the bias. <laughs> no, I come back like a year later. I'm back. So oh, now the second, God. well, it gets better. So I had like the last night I had was kind of like a little solemn because it was my last night because of the mandate put on by the city. So I didn't get the shot. Don't get mad at me, people. I was retiring tonight anyway. So it was a three month thing. So I said, you know what? I don't want this. I'm doing this. But I am going to have another last night in April. We think sometime in April because I didn't get a real last night the second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to have a last night. Nice. I'm going to keep having last nights every year. Yeah, yeah why not? Hey. Not, but you're putting out, right? You're, you're oh, yeah, I got to put out. I don't care. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. You got to put out. You well, got I have it. three things I'm going to buy at the firehouse. One they know about. The other two they don't know about. I got to keep them a secret because they're really nice gifts. Because, you know, we're, we're ass backwards in the fire service. We give gifts when we retire. We don't get gifts. It's yeah, weird. right. No, you got promoted. Right. You have to give a party. Yeah. You retire, you give a party. Yeah. Yeah. And you right? give it to the firehouse. Maybe yeah. if you play your cards right, you could have a last night like every year. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> just that. keep coming back. And... <laughs> I pay for it. They won't care. Oh, hey. Yeah, man. If Mike's paying for the food. Is there food? Is there booze? I don't care. Yeah. 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 Hey, so I hate you do that. It's, well, it's it's our 135th second, so. last day. Yeah. <laughs> if you're willing me in there, I'll be a sucker. Mm -hmm. I mean, like that. Hey, hey, Mike, your daughter, is it Lex Scott? Is it Lex? Alexis uh, Alexandra. Yeah, yeah. She said, I, I, start, I started the trip. I'm, I'm a founding, founding kid. kid. She said. She's a founding kid. You're going to founding fall. As originally. She's out in New Mexico right now visiting my oldest daughter. And all oh, my other two grandkids out I'm there. Sorry, so they're like, having a ball out there in the snow. My but, oldest uh, yeah, 21. You know. She still talks about that. Still talks about that trip. Oh gosh, yes, yeah. They, they're never gonna leave that. And it's it's yeah. the guys and the men and 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 the fun. It's you know the stories you tell. And the reason you become a firefighter, one of the reasons is all the stories you can tell. So someone said to me, "So you became a firefighter, so you could be the most popular guy at a party." I went, "Yeah, that's exactly it." Basically, yeah. You, that's it. You're the popular guy. You a party. Story. When you're sitting at a table with a whole bunch of people and they're telling you. You know, what do you do? What do you do? You say fine, and everybody goes, Oh, he's fine. Yeah, yeah. Never oh, yeah. afraid to say what you Tell do. Tell us right? 11 story. I said, Well, I survived. Yeah. How's that? Does that work? I don't get embarrassed. Yeah. I, I survived. Yeah, move on. Uh, yeah, move like on. That. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I don't want to be rude about it. I mean, we did we yeah. did survive the collapse in North Tower 58. We were there, we were on scene, and um, you know, it was kind of surreal, the whole thing. And and, and we've heard about it many, many times. A lot of my friends, this guy Pete Freund was we kept a fireman together, he was in 55 engine. Jim Quante Chinta, he was he died then. You know, there's a bunch of people that I work with uh, over the years that I knew. Jimmy Amato was, was killed on 9-11, uh, you know, and, and everyone has those stories. I don't like to beat that drum because I go by Georgie Johnson. The, we call him the Rocket. Him and Dan, the guys in the 9-11 photo, they made a deal never to go anywhere to make money off the 9-11 stuff. And as far as I know, to this day, they've never done that. They only did one appearance that I know of. Now, that could be wrong. 
one appearance. Uh, a year later, they were oh, a few months later, I believe, they requested to go to the White House or the president. They were ordered to go because they didn't want to go. Hmm. Like, no, we're not doing this. And, no, you're ordered to go. This is the White House. You can't say no. So they've kind of had that that mantra of this is above us. Right. And I kind of want to do the same thing. Like, I'll talk about it whenever you ask. But I will not bring it up as the first thing I talk about. Yeah, right. I just I, I was not a hero. They were training for three heroes that day. I was just there. Those everybody. two guys are 157 guys, or those two guys are 58 trucks? They were 157 guys. And there was a guy from Rescue 2 there, the third guy. I don't know him. But Dan, right. I knew him. And then, George, I, I, I worked with him for many years. Mm. The Rocket. He ended up retiring a battalion chief. Well, Dan's in 103. Yeah, uh, McWilliams. Yeah, McWilliams in 103, yeah. So, yeah, he's a great guy. Uh, you know, I, I know him, and a wonderful guy. But he that was his kind of thing, and they kind of stood by it. And I thought that was yeah. kind of honorable and noble. You know, let's not make money off of 343 of our guys. You know, because we just happened to put up a, a flag and someone took a picture of it. You know, it's not about us. And it's, it's the same thing. But I will talk about it when someone like the guy from uh, Vermont, my friend Mikey Curtin up there. He goes, Mike, you didn't tell me you were. Now, I've known him for several years. Because you didn't tell me you survived 9-11. I said, you didn't ask. Yeah. I don't like I to guess. lead with that. You know, like, hey, <laughs> Mike, yeah. uh, I survived 9-11. Yeah. I survived 9-11. You know, yeah. what do I get? You know, <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah. So, and, you know, and and we like I said, you've been through a thousand mm -hmm. times. All the guys on here have had stories about it. You know, probably better than mine. I was in that book. Uh, with uh, uh, in their own words, it was a book written about 9 11, and uh, uh -huh. I'm not sure his name, but my chauffeur, he just retired. He was actually in the hotel when the two towers came down. Really? His story was insane. Yeah, he I just on the right side of the pole, right? There was a pole there. Anybody on the left got killed. Uh, they they were on the top one, they came down. One of the guys was going to take an elevator down. He died when the first tower came down. They survived, they were covered in. The, they come down, they find the Mexican civilians. They're going down, and the second tower comes down, and they end up sliding down like a girder, but they survived it. But I read oh the story. I said, I'm embarrassed about my story. I said, mine, we were outside. We just pulled up on scene. We were about a half a, about a block away. We get off the rig, and all of a sudden, the tower comes down. We hide behind the fire truck. Like, it wasn't like we, you know, we didn't know if we could have been killed, but he was actually in the hotel. I, I, said, heard, those, I heard so many stories at the hotel. Yeah, like Frankie Osell, he was a Queens guy at the time. He, been, he just retired. But, uh, yeah, you read those stories, and I'm embarrassed. I said, you know what? This is a little bit more real than I had. Mine was was cool. And the urban legend is, in 58, we had my show, this guy, Willie Smith. Uh, Bill Smith was driving, and he had a little depth perception problem as he was getting a little bit older. So the rumor is he went the wrong way and saved 58 truck because he went, he made up his signal. The only thing that saved us, we think, we were in 20 truck quarters, because you got to hear the story because I said it. We load up with all the extra supplies because Squad 18 was in their quarters because they were redoing Squad 18. All oh, right, yeah. So we took all the extra ropes, cylinders, tools, and the guys from the 20 truck were coming in. We threw them on the rig. There's a picture there someplace in there. You can see it. I know you had it, uh, Pete, at some point. And we guys, jumped on the guys deck. are riding up on the deck, Pete. In the back. Yeah, it took us about 10 minutes to do this, and then we left. Then we mm. got there. They all got off, and the tower came down as we had, as we got off the rig. So those 10 minutes saved you. We think. We don't, know. we don't know yeah. what we would have been, been doing, but it was like, you know what? Yeah. It's better than not having those 10 minutes. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, I always, I shudder to think what might have happened. Yeah. So, but sound, like was, a, sound like a freight train, Mike, when it was coming down? Sound like a garage door, like a metal garage door closing to me. It was like... <sighs> I, I know I'm not a real good sound effects guy. I need like a Robin Williams guy here. Yeah. But it was like, like a garage door, a metal garage door closing. And I'm like, what the hell is that? And I always see a cloud of smoke is coming at us. Like, oh. Yeah. And there was some civilians standing there, like staring. We're like, get out of here, man. This is not a game. Yeah. And then we survived that. We walked down. And then we got scared again because we heard jets, more more jet engines. We're like, what? I'm in another plane? It was yeah. F-16s. You could see yep. them through the smoke. <clears throat> we yeah. felt kind of comfortable. Well, we have air cover now. The air the military is here. So. We're starting to get, you know, we stay won't bomb us with planes. Yeah. We, you know, we were right, clearly, but, uh, you know, everyone has stories. I mean, you know, they all have uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. something inside. But it, it was a long, long day. And, uh, you know, I'm, hopefully we never have to go through that again. But any department in the country, any fire department in the country would have done exactly what we did. I know that they wouldn't have shirked their responsibility. They'd have done exactly what we did. So yep. I said, like, we just did our job. We didn't do anything yeah. special. We just did our job. That's it. That's just how I, mean, I feel. We, I was talking about this. Yeah. Human nature is self-preservation, and we fight that human nature to go help other people, man. All firemen, all firemen, yeah. do the same thing. They fight that 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 oh. uh, self-preservation that's in every single human being. Did you watch the news today? The the Ukraine they, they were bombing. They were firefighters putting out fires in Kiev. Yeah, <laughs> the missile attack 
from, this, from Russia, and they're still fighting fires. I mean, that's what firefighters do. That's a perfect example of like you just yeah. said. Yeah, yeah, we can be blown up, but we're gonna put the fire out first. We did a whole show about the the fire brigade in uh, Britain during the uh, during Blitz. the Blitz. Blitz. So yeah. if you have any, and you know, that's that's a story of that, and there's some amazing yeah, pictures. Everybody, uh, we had somebody from London. I forget show. what his name was. We had somebody, right, talking about that from London. uh, yes, we did. Uh, yeah, two guys uh, did. Um, was it Dudeny? Dudeny, Steve Dudeny, was it him? Yes, and the other guy was uh, Nigel Snowy. Nigel, Kane. yeah, yeah, Nigel. Yeah, yeah, that's an English name. I'm Nigel. Yeah. Hello, I'm Nigel. Oh, Nigel. oh god, they, they love when we do the, the British voice. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's what I'm saying. Patty's Day, they don't like that, but anyway, no. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, we'll be that. doing a St. Patty's Day party down in Florida, my friend. If you oh. want to come on down, if you want to come yeah. down to the sausage party, come on down. Come on. Oh, I don't know about the sausage party. I bring Italian bread. Let's <laughs> <I'll> see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, joy! You like the All spicy right. sausage? You like the? Uh, I like the mild. I don't want to get too spicy. Pot, yeah, like the pot, yeah. yeah. Hot burn now. I'm yeah. getting old. Yeah, that way you can eat more. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, all right, Pete, is it that time, buddy? Oh, you guys know what time it is. It is time for the old school tip of the day. Day, day. All sure right. Kid. Take it away, Mike. There he goes. All right, guys, I don't really have a specific thing. I think I have several things to put together to make a specific thing. Take the time to learn, to listen. God gave us, you know, you've heard this. I didn't invent this. I'm old, but I'm not that old. God gave us two eyes, two ears, and one mouth for a reason. You listen twice as much as we should talk. See twice as much as we should talk. Listen and learn from the guys who've done it. We didn't create this, right? I didn't teach you guys how to force a door. Mike Scott who created forcing doors. No. I take the things that guys taught me. Stay calm at the fire. You're not alone. You're with your buddies. You have trained men around you, trained women around you. If you train, you'll be fine. Take the time to learn and to listen to the experience from the guys from before us. When I came on, guys talking about the 23rd Street Fire, which 12 New York City firefighters were killed. Every rank from deputy chief to proby. And they explained different things, how terrazzo floor hid the fire from them. So our thermal imaging cameras don't read through the thermal the uh, terrazzo floors, even to this day. That's a learning opportunity. When I mentioned the thermal imaging camera on the outside of the house, that was a learning thing for me. It was recent. It was only a couple weeks ago. So I'm still learning, even though I retired two and a half months ago. I'm still learning. Keep learning. Listen to the guys who have done it. Use your own judgment. If you have an idea, give the opinion. But listen, pay attention. Trust the people that went there before you. When you first uh, started driving, I have two 16-year-olds who are taking driver's ed soon. And I tell them how to drive, what to do. I said, I've done this before. This is what you do. And they go, well, I said, would I lie to you? But I tell you something wrong. I'm like, no, you wouldn't. Exactly. The same thing with firefighting. It's common sense. We teach common sense. Okay. Once you learn how to force a door, guess what? Those are the best ways to do it. So pay attention. Take the time to learn. Once you learn one thing, you move to the next thing. If you want to go to a rescue or squad unit, like, you know, some kind of special operations command, which does like, say, uh, confined space or scuba or whatever. Great. I'm all for that. We need that. But what we need first is confident firefighters who can handle the basics. Watch a shortstop in the pros, right? What's he doing before the game? He's taking ground balls. Is there anyone that doesn't think they can take ground balls as a pro shortstop? Of course they can, but they're practicing staying sharp. I went to a training in Slate Hill a couple weeks ago. It's a local department up here in Orange County, and they were gracious enough to allow me to come. And I watched them drill basics. They were talking about firefighter removal. Basics. How do we save this guy? How do we save our own guys? It was it was a great training. I thought they did a great job. And then they actually fed me dinner, which was nice. <laughs> and that's okay. That's what made it nice. So the basic training is going to do it. I know I'm beating it a little bit. I got it. But if a shortstop who's a professional, who's the best at the game, is taking ground balls and practicing, shouldn't we be practicing forcing doors, pulling ceilings, throwing up ladders, doing building inspections so we know the building construction type to save our lives? Take the time to learn this stuff. Doesn't happen overnight. Like they said, my ancestor, my, my cousin Caesar said, because I am that old, Rome wasn't built in a day. <laughs> it takes time. So give it the time, guys. You have a long career ahead of you, hopefully as long as mine uh, or longer, whatever it works. And and I support you guys out there everywhere. Uh, my, all my friends in the in the volunteer service up here in Orange County, 
uh, who've been so gracious to allow me to help me teach them. Uh, I'm very grateful. And they give me the time to talk because when I talk, I need time. <laughs> hey, salute. Nice. Cheers. Oh, That's Mike. a great one. I, I think I might just give this to him right now. <laughs> right, <what do> <laughs> That's, award? That's a salty. That's a salty award, buddy. I didn't uh, know that. At <laughs> the end of the year, we have a salty award show. One of, the, one of the categories is best old school tip of the day. Like you know, it. you know what? Um, mm. It's funny that you should say that because whenever you get these interviews about with the special forces guys and all that stuff, like the tier one dudes, like the guys who shop in Laden and all that, they say, what makes you guys so special? And they're like, we just drill the fundamentals all day long, night, day, you know, wet weather, dry weather, snow. It's the same thing over and over and over again. So you're onto it, man. You're right. And my, and my one friend who's, who comes back, I know him I, I know him as a name. He comes back every year to the 9-11 things. He was a fireman for only a short time, Steve Buscemi. I actually work with him, the actor. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He was in 55 age. He comes back because we met him at a, at a thing. I got I don't know how much time. I got two seconds. We met him at a, we were playing softball in 157 in Brooklyn, and he was with his kids. And we brought him over. because oh, Mike, I'm not a fireman. I said, you're always a fireman. Yeah. And we gave him some hot dogs and soda, and we all met him. And Georgie Johnson actually met him. He goes, you're lying, Steve Buscemi. I said, you're making that up. I said, make up. <laughs> Robert De Niro, and that's Steve Buscemi. <laughs> but anyway, what he, but he always comes back to 55 Engine to the 9 11 Memorial because he's a fireman once. He's always a fireman. And mm. guys out there that were firemen, no, no, absolutely. Him, he's still a fireman. And I retired. I'm still a fireman. That's why I wore blue under my light blue shirt because down deep, I'm still a fireman. I don't care what yeah, the uh, absolutely, right, nice. I'm still a fireman. Nice. Like you, like you, Lou. I mean, you guys, you know. You're but, really, yeah, by the way, Danny Buckheit in the chat says that he was with you at 20 Truck and just say, to say hello. And oh, he delayed your response. Yes. And to what? And he delayed your response. He said, <laughs> he delayed our response. response. Yeah. Oh, uh, he's good. That was Good tip. I like it. Yeah. It, it's just a simple thing, really. And this is common sense. Uh, maybe if you have Buscemi's number, you can give him a ring and tell him to come on the show. <laughs> like that. I mean, I'm not saying. We'll give him a hot dog. We're not we'll afraid a hot, to give him, we'll a hot we'll give him a couple of hot dogs. We'll give him a hamburger, too. I mean, you know, you know, you know, you know <laughs> give a little, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, was a good guy. yeah, a nice guy. And again, all these guys, uh, you know, that we've met over the years and work with, I've had the pleasure to work with, uh, you know, the, the Mike Champos, the, 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 the Prince, obviously, you know, is kind of a legend in his own mind. I mean, in, in his own time. Audience slip. That was it. Uh, but, you know, great, great guys. Uh, great guys, all of them. Uh, Salk, all those guys you've had on, I've been watching and stuff, and the guys out there. These guys know stuff. They've they've been to fires. Uh, That's why we got to get him on here. We got to get him in the room. Don't worry about it. Consider it done. He owes me. All right. Oh boy. Oh. I don't think he owes me. He owes me. He owes me. He can't refuse. Mean yeah. Beautiful. I thoroughly enjoyed the show there, Lieutenant Scott. Great stuff. Great, great stuff. You had a great career, brother. No doubt. Who? You tell your brother I said hello. You guys are not that guy. Never heard of that guy. That guy. That guy. Yeah. Awesome. I will. Got a great thank show. You. Appreciate you coming on. Ruffy, you no, got any shout outs, buddy? Uh, I do not. No. Oh, how about um, you, Petey? Yeah, I do actually. Uh, two <clears throat> quick things. Uh, one really? is uh, a quick shout out for Tank's boy, Rafael Gonzalez, as he graduates Knoxville Fire Department Academy tomorrow evening. Wow. Uh, so he's nice. really proud of him. So, congrats on that. Uh, number two, guys, I think we all know we see what's going on in uh, in uh, Ukraine right now. Um, I always say this to everybody a lot. I always say expect to self-rescue. Uh, you're seeing people trying to leave. They, they have no mobility over there. Their vehicles are down. Their fuel is down. They don't have supplies. Guys, just take care of yourselves, all right? Um, the world is not peaches and cream. Um, take care of yourselves and your community around you, whether you're on duty, off duty, you're just a citizen like me. That's it. We all have to take responsibility for ourselves and our country. And the time is today. That's it. All right. I would just, uh, I forgot to do this last, uh, last show, but I just wanted to our condolences to, uh, Lieutenant Robert Cruz, uh, passed away with the FDNY, uh, a couple of days ago. So I just wanted to. Rest they had his funeral, I believe, yesterday or the day before. <clears throat> yeah, we had uh, Chief E.J. Tierney just passed away the other day. Yeah, E.J. Tierney, yep. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. I can't believe it. I couldn't even believe that. I remember him, too. Yeah, he's a nice guy. working worked with him a bunch of times. Very nice man. A good, competent fire officer. Like, just the guy you want. Yeah. Cool yeah, and calm. Yeah. Yep. 
All right, Petey. All right, Mike, just hang loose. Uh, Petey's going to run through the stuff, and we'll uh, we'll talk in the back. Yeah. Remember, right. we have uh, Chief John Norman on Monday, and then me and Ruffy are off uh, on the road. Getting over yep. to uh, Pittsburgh, Monroe. and uh, and I'll let everyone know if Monday is a late start or not. Uh, I won't know until the day of. I should be home on time. Should be able to get right in the chair. But uh, I'll let you all know. Um, sometimes these things get delayed. I think we'll be all right though. Anyway, want to know about Mac Boston? A couple of guys are asking about Mac Boston. They want a little more clarification, I guess, on Mac Boston. What what is Mac Boston? Okay, it's, it's a it's a department up in Boston Spa, New York, and they do a training once a year. They didn't do it this year because of the Wuhan stuff. We are a couple of FDNY guys go up there and train with their guys, and we just cross train and teach each other stuff. But they're up in Boston Spa. Uh, the princess is in charge. I, I, I don't have her number and name, it, and, and I always call the princess, so I forget. But uh, they can you know, call Boston Spa up there and check. Mac Boston is a truck company up there. Uh, I think it's Truck 18. Yeah, we played um, hockey. I think we went up there one time, Ruffy, didn't we? That is went correct. Yeah, we, we hung out with those had... guys one time. It was a good time. We yeah, that's all from the uh, guy. The guy from Boston Salt is the guy. So when the picture with, with Mike Champ was up. He hooked that up because he's from up there originally. He's from actually like Rochester, but he, he gravitated to there and they moved over. So they hooked it up and they do this training we do it once a year. It's a one day training. Uh, it's it's just it's just a good you know. Yeah, good so thing. just uh, if you want to get part of it, Google it. Yeah. Google. Google, Google. 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 You know, they are going to yeah. do it again this year. They said so. Uh, that, well, when when is it usually, boss? What month? Usually September. Okay, so you got plenty of time. Do yeah. the Google. Google, and I'll be at the New York State Google. Fire Chiefs uh, Conference teaching a class. Oh, we'll be up there. We'll hook oh, up. Oh, no kidding. I'm so doing Syracuse? Yeah, Syracuse. I'm doing basement fires, residential versus commercial. Oh, I smell I smell at dinner. Come, come see us at uh, – we'll go out to dinner. We love it. Yes, I, I owe you guys at least one beer. Oh, no, nah. we, we t- we'll take care of you. Well, whatever That's you all, listen, I, listen. Try to fix Mike, now, Mike. It's all on <laughs> Lou. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> listen, you come, you come to our booth anytime after noon, you'll see what we're really oh, like at a show. Oh, like. not, <laughs> I can't oh, wait. Oh, yeah. After the Egg McMuffins yeah. wear off. Oh, uh, yeah. All right, Petey. Okay, everybody, you guys, you guys know that you can watch us here on YouTube, but also listen to us on uh, iTunes podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or wherever fine audio podcasts are found. Subscribe. It's free, 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 free. free. All right. Already, you, for uh, yeah. And if you're here, come on, guys, youtube.com forward slash getting salty, getting salty experience. Hit that like, subscribe, and share button. Like, at least subscribe. It's also free, 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 free. Yeah, man. Come on. All right. Um, hit that button. It really helps us out, man. I'm just gonna keep yelling until you do it. So do it. Um, Instagram, if you're on there, hit us up at Salty Dog Inc., where you will find the finest, saltiest, most smoky fire photos in the game, curated by one Mr. Refrano oh, at 5 30 in the morning. Yeah. In that chair where he's sitting right now, and it, yeah. and he's got three jackets on because the heat's not on. Yeah, because you don't have the heat on yet. The heat's not on. <laughs> so definitely hit that up. You dick. <laughs> you dick. Uh, getting salty apparel guys. That is uh, one way we pay the bills, but we also get you guys the coolest, freshest <laughs> firefighter apparel and accessories <laughs> in the game. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all of our sponsors. That's you guys in the super chat. Who hit us up tonight and always we really really appreciate that um it makes a real difference especially for guys like me so thank you i appreciate it uh facebook guys uh getting salty fans uh we're over thirty thousand members now uh lots of culture in there a lot of people sharing info back and forth ball breaking it's a good time uh get in there have fun no politics keep it respectful that's the one rule basically just uh, mm. don't be a dick, and uh, they don't like politics in there. I don't know, but it's just that's the one thing. I don't know how the fuck. Okay. How the fuck did I have thirty thousand and we only have twenty six thousand? Yeah, what the fuck? Come on, I don't know. Could somebody, for Christ's sake, somebody go and just hit the the uh, subscribe button for crying out loud? Do it. Just do, do it. it. Do All it. right. Uh, mean, yeah. I'll send Scott away after you. I don't have no problem. Uh, yeah, Just, you know, I'm like the, Terry Ward with me. You don't want to mess with that guy. Ah, ah, we'll, we'll, we'll bring balloon arms. We'll bring balloon arms. Forget All right. <laughs> get salty experience. Get getting salty experience at gmail.com. Uh, that dudes, that's uh, that's how you get us all the questions for your QA shows. Shoot us some good ones, man. Um, get in there with all the questions you can get of us. And we can give you another Q&A. Uh, guys, Coob's podcast at gmail.com is where 
you will be emailing us anything for our cock lofts and cocktails show or uh, also yeah, our news shows, basically, where we want helmet cam footage, fire photos, your rig photos, table photos, your hot old lady pic for the contest. It's kind of dried up a little bit. The hot old lady picture started to dry up a little bit. I'm not, it? I'm pretty sure they didn't dry up in your house. Wink, wink, nod, nod. Mink, yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, please shoot us those uh, those pics yeah. and all that good stuff at coopspodcast at gmail.com. And that is all the news awesome. that's fit to print. Lieutenant Scott, I look forward to seeing you up in Syracuse and breaking bread with you. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, guys, thanks so much, man. Thank, Thank you, for, you, Mike, for coming on. Great man. stories. Really? Yep. I know, I know, my face is sore from laughing. It was a good show, right, Ruff? Very good. I, yeah. I, I I don't know. I think he would give Gabby a little bit of a run for the money. Oh yeah, he's he's, he's no, he's not even in my league. He's not even. <laughs> <laughs> You make, <laughs> you make coffee nervous. You make coffee nervous. Right, right. Yeah, I'll just tell you for the salty, Gabby, Gabby got the award for the most incoher incoherent fire story ever told. <laughs> <laughs> you got nominated for all three positions. Right? Yeah, you, you start the story over here, then he's talking uh, about something else. You never understand uh, where the story went. Love it, love it, love it. Love well, it. Well, his Good hands time. are waving off all Good over stuff. the place. Good yeah. stuff. <laughs> oh. All right, guys. We will see you on Monday. Lieutenant Scotto, thank you. Stay low and go, fellas and ladies. All right. We'll see you at the big one, everybody. Stay safe, everybody. Stay safe.